Okay, this is after the podcast. Just so you know, the podcast is very good. You should listen to that. But um, I am going to plug some stuff. I'm doing a show at the end of the year at the Black Box in Belfast on the 28th of December. Uh, Please come to that. Uh, Please come to that. Uh, If you are in Derry and you're looking to see the show, I'm going to be doing a a, a work in progress version of that show at the end of November. That's not been announced yet, but just follow me on social media uh, as at whoislukemcgib. Thanks. Hello. Um, <laughs> welcome to the User Hectic Podcast with me, your host, Justin Freeburn, and my co-conspirator, Sippy Campbell. Uh, today's guest, we have the illustrious, the Mr. Miyagi, the self-proclaimed Obi-Wan Kenobi of the North. <laughs> hey, <Irish>. self- <laughs> when did I... Hey, hey. Self-complained. <laughs> self-complained. <laughs> self-complained. Uh, I'm self-complained. He's got the high ground over there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Luke Here, McGinn. As a 5'8 man, I've never been accused of having the high ground in my life. Um, I really like this camera setup. It feels like I'm auditioning for something. <laughs> but it also feels like it's very close yeah. in a way that feels a little porny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, is that a little porn? So what got you into this? The, yeah, yeah. Like that's the that's the slap cam, if you know what I mean, where you hear the slapping. Of it also the feels like if if we turn the lights off and there's a silhouette of you, you're going to tell us a harrowing Ooh. story. Oh yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. going to be a reconstruction in the yeah. background. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, something uh, something abusive, or you know, if you got it dark enough, I could look like one of them wee Hiroshima shadows. You know them and. That, that, sounds like, that sounds like a racist <laughs> slur, and it's not. But no, it's no, it's no, like yeah. a, it's it's like uh, yeah yeah. The when when people got hit by the L bomb in Hiroshima, mm. they left these uh, shadowy imprints on walls. Did you ever go, see the the Pompeii yeah. wanking man? I've seen the Pompeii wanking man. <laughs> I've seen him yeah. in the flesh. Well, in you the see, dust. You <laughs> seen, him, <laughs> <laughs> seen him pressing the flesh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fuck right. Did, did you, you get down and spoon him? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna be the first man to uh, meet Pompeii wanking man and truly listen. <laughs> 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 Everybody asks, what's he doing, not how's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> he's just feeling he never got the finish. Yeah, yeah. That was he's the... lying down too, isn't I mean, he? Uh, it's like, it's like if, you, if you bump into like, you know, fuck one of your uncle's mess or something, how are you getting on, Pompey Wanker Man? Well, above the ground. <laughs> 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 lying down on the ground and having a wank's a weird one, isn't it? Did he not have a bed or something? I, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of my wanks are all lying down. Uh, that's, by the way, that's got to be about 40 seconds before someone talked about wanking. <laughs> yeah. 40 yeah. seconds. I don't know. Stop the clock. But, uh, <laughs> it's a new record. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly like, I like a lie down wank. You know, I don't, down. I don't like to be compressed. I like to, you know. Yeah, I, I feel I, like, do you think there's something sort of, do you think, uh, like, you know, like, do you know how people are lying on, on, like, sleeping on the ground these days is good for posture? Do you think he was on to the Andrew Huberman type of wagon? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. Andrew Huberman was about that. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, this guy, he's going to be big as fuck. <laughs> I know Andrew Huberman's big on getting some natural sunlight, but a volcano was maybe taking that a bit too far. Um, fuck, I, no, here, maybe, maybe he's getting his chi aligned, you know? Maybe he's in, <laughs> getting the line, not chi, you girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whenever you do the old anything that has chakras in it I'm not a big chakra guy but I tried everything you know and um, you say it so like East Belfast uh, chakra we, ch- we chakra <laughs> <A> shock, <laughs> like, you get like a chakra and he's yeah, like, I'm going, I'm going down the chakras or do you want it <laughs> <laughs> yeah give me a portion of Pompey Wanking man <laughs> <laughs> oh I nearly got the fucking fly sorry it was uh, on your shoulder <laughs> sorry I just look like I'm fucking <laughs> 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 just something if you're getting a portion of Pompey Wanking man you don't put it in a paper bag because it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's too wet but like my, the fuming thing about that was like I know it's like you know everyone's thought about I'd it imagine like it was probably human imagine, <laughs> <laughs> imagine your whole like legacy the rest of eternity yeah. is you're just solidified in a wanking position like, <laughs> yeah, no. like it's like that's your like your your kids and your kids kids if he had sure he probably bust them all over the bed but like <laughs> or he never got them out anywhere but like but that's like the thought of that is like why but imagine like you're lost yeah. that's, that's why they always say you need to wear jammies to bed or like because <laughs> <laughs> if you're down in your sleep you don't want to be down in it or well, like, I mean like it's kind of worse isn't it if you're not just frozen in a wanking pose but you're clearly wanking a clothed dick if you know what I mean because imagine he was rubbing it over the top as well yeah, well, oh, yeah. Uh, embarrassing embarrassing what you mean a patter put so many R's in that he, <laughs> yeah, a patter he, he, <laughs> like, we patter <laughs> I, oh god yeah imagine like he's probably like up in heaven being like I have a fucking degree <laughs> <laughs> he got but man got me and Plato were like that <laughs> man got fucking edged by Mount Vesuvius <laughs> I discovered Atlantis <laughs> but you said you saw him live that, that you saw him in person <laughs> yeah he was, was great what support. a show what great a show. material <laughs> yeah. who supported him who's, yeah. a, who's, a, who's yeah. a wanking man that was okay. who, who's in charge of the powers Nero. of that <laughs> but, um, uh, just yeah, decapitating people on stage <laughs> we went to 
when we went to Pompeii, it was actually before you could actually <laughs> touch the walls and shit. So <laughs> I went up. I was like, oh. Did you, I, did you? no, no, I didn't touch the Langham man there. Uh, but um, God forbid. No, um, <laughs> yeah, I went to Pompeii fucking years ago, and really interesting. Actually, even walking around all the streets and all the like, even all the old sewer systems and all. And there was like a. Nice. I want to say there's. The, on, the, on a, a tile woman fingering herself <laughs> <laughs> well, there was, that was dirty humor that was shit <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> on a tile on the ground there was like um, pictures of penises and that's basically was like the prostitute district or something apparently nice. that's what they said and then I'm sure the wanky mom wasn't too far away from there like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he's the outside of town he was like I can't get there just get out now fuck it. <laughs> he got turned down that day but uh, yeah, man, it's pretty well, good. Pompey yeah. wanking man. Fair play. Fair play. How do we get on the Pompey wanking man again? Um, I can't even remember. But just here. wanking, you know what I mean? Oh, here, but that, that's but it's always like that thing. It's like as I say, you know, like it's like why your mom always tells you to put on like good knickers, you know, like every day <laughs> because like you don't want to like get in a car accident and someone yeah. and someone has to cut your clothes off and you're wearing like fucking holy Every boxers ball. like you know no, so right. that's why you want to die in a car crash after Christmas that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah you want to be constipated not diarrhea yeah. you die. that's what you like whenever I'm constipated I'm like good good I can I can I can crash this car now <laughs> yeah I, I want to crash a car when I'm constipated like uh, I seen a video the other day of a UFC fighter and he's like they're like fully like you know Scrapping, funny enough, mm. and uh, like one of them is like choking him out, and he like goes to like the way, whatever way he's being choked out, he's like sort of on his neck, and he like rolls backwards to like, you know, stamp back up because he like tops out, yeah, and it's like he actually like shit himself, and I know that's quite immature humor <laughs> but it was when he stood up and he was just like he didn't even give a fuck that he had shit himself. What a I was so like. Like I was admiring this man because yeah, yeah. he was like it was like going down. Like, he was starting on it and he was walking it all over the <laughs> ring. And <laughs> I was dog. like, "This is the first. That's the first card." I was yeah. like, "Every fight after that has to fight on shit." I yeah, was right like, now. The referee right Herb Dean come up and put his nose in it. <laughs> 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 you won't fucking do it again, you shit, will you? I'll use the letter. Tra- <laughs> I know, oh, but like, well, imagine that. Like, like that's another thing. Like your legacy, you're like fucking, like the rest of your life, you're just known yeah. as the guy that actually shit into the ring. Physical perfection, you, years of training, yeah, cutting, not eating. He was probably doing some all the cutting. You have to do a lot of horrible shit, don't you? As well, yeah. Right, right, right. And then that fucking happens, and it's like, I mean, you couldn't even tell me his name. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. I'd, I'd literally just seen the clip of him. He's just feces, man. Yeah, but well, like, Bobby Wagaman and Dana Shite. <laughs> Dana <laughs> Shite. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> but oh. there, that, that happens frequently enough with fighters, because it's a fight or fight response. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So, what is it? Yeah, fighter fucking shite. fighter style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh and that's why, that's why he gets paid the big know? bucks. I am human. I am human. <laughs> I, I was in the middle of saying it as yeah, well. You can't just... ghost off Dana Shite all night now. <laughs> no, it's, no. it's 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 great, but it's you know. Oh, fighter there's, shite. There's a, the guts me. of an arm, you know. <laughs> there's a, there's there's definitely an, an, an amygdala shite joke floating around in there somewhere, oh, but yeah, I, I can't even figure it out. Oh, yeah, some sort of yeah. Um, but Aye. that's actually one of my favorite, like sort of John Crones. Sorry. That's pretty good. Yeah. All I've got is Creatina Turner, and that's nothing to do with shite. That's nothing that's to do with shite. <laughs> Creatina Turner. <laughs> Name of the episode for no reason. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where were we? Where were we? we were on? We were on shites. We're on legacy, really, weren't yeah. we? Le- yeah. what, what, what is, what How is, do you want to be remembered when you yeah, die? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Here's what, a good one. Yeah, go on, yeah well, exactly. Oh, your, me? Oh, what fuck, is right. Your, like, you're the guest. Uh, man. When I, when I Black box <laughs> wanking, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dies on a side wanking. <laughs> Dies on a stage wanking. But they're just like, just look, you're alive. You can leave at any time. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real comforting thing to hear in a podcast in someone's house. It's soundproofed as well, isn't it? Oh, you yeah. can leave any time. <laughs> I swear, lock the door, so be. But uh, I... Uh, yeah, no, uh, I don't know. When I was when I was younger, I think I, I thought I only really wanted to be remembered as being uh, nice and funny. And uh, so far, so okay, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, that's all I wanted. What about you guys? I think that's that's a pretty, in the most respect way possible, a really good thing. A low bar. People yeah, re- no, but you know what I mean. That's good. That's yeah. a very achievable. I think nice. you've exceeded it, unless you become like a pedophile at some point, and then we're like, ah, look. Well, who it. knows? You know, who knows what's happening? Oh, that's a real pedo sound in response. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just saying anything that that's isn't. I am not a pedo. I am not a pedophile. <laughs> just uh, don't be getting any look me given tattoos anytime soon. <laughs> 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 Do you ever think that uh, that Pizza Express in Woking, like whenever they saw the news, are like gonna have to take down that framed photo of Prince Andrew? <laughs> yeah. I, know, I was watching a, a side man video the other day. Fuck 
fucking um I'm an adult, adult, adult no watch side man suck your fucking mat. Who they? Um, <laughs> they're like a YouTube group. You know KSI. KSI oh yeah, 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 yeah Like his, yeah. his YouTube group. Oh, they're fucking hilarious. I don't care what anyone great. says. They are great, some man. of them could be comedians. You know. Yeah. That um, man. and uh, there was one they were doing like storage wars. And uh, they they got actually. they do yeah and the, there was a they found a bottle of whiskey on it and it was like an engraved bottle of whiskey but it was or like a, a count, special edition special like, edition mm. and it was a Prince Aunt Andrew edition <laughs> and it was like it's like Bell's whiskey so it's usually like forty fifty quid a bottle you know and Aye. like but well like if if there's like a royal on it it might be expensive and but it was right. like oh. it's like the wrong royal <laughs> that's gonna make it more expensive that, though, but that you know yeah I mean? that's because like, I would I'd put that up in the oh, back if I had in that a morbid like, kind of way yeah, like, that would be the ultimate podcast prop I think wouldn't it to have on the table oh I like, fuck it that would be sitting here I'd, I'd, I'd swap Soupy out for that actually I would swap me out and Soupy just does it with a bottle <laughs> <laughs> would actually get views then <laughs> so uh, did you ever see who the fuck is it now correct me if I'm wrong or forgive me if I'm wrong the, um, American podcasters I think it was Bert Kreish no it was um, Tom Segura and who is his co-host of one of his podcasts it's Bert Kreischer yeah two um, bars one um, yes. you want to talk about the teacup the teacup yeah uh, but, uh, and Tom oh. Segura uh, they, they buy each other a gift or something for your birthday or whatever the fuck it is Aye. as you do Aye. and uh Tom Scarra bought Bert Kreischer uh, Hitler's teacup. <laughs> <laughs> like, from, from like, like, his summer home. <laughs> but, like, legit to, like, pay, but, like certificate and all. Like, and he, he's, like, crying laughing at it. It's so good. Like What's the, it got the, on the teacup? It's got, like, a wee phrase. Like, I, I think number was, one Fuhrer. <laughs> 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 World's worst dad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. Hold on a second. Uh, oh, fuck. I have laugh genocide. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Live, laugh, genocide. <laughs> I love the idea of Hitler on holiday as well. He's yeah. working on his wee tan. Like, <laughs> where did that man have time to go on? Yeah. He's <laughs> going to hit the boogie board. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we have built some sand castles. <laughs> what is your vegetarian option? <laughs> um, it is two euro pint. We are robbed at home. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, have duty free. <laughs> I got I got Alan Irwin a, a mug of me actually in the bath. That's but it, it was one of those mugs that um, it's just black and then you pour hot water in it and then the image forms. And so I was like, you can, you have that. Like, have Merry Christmas. That was a Christmas present. <laughs> just because he, he likes a wee low budget gift. Yeah. Um, so that means he doesn't have to get me anything high budget, which I. Uh, I'm on, that's not criticism I respect that that's yeah. level level that playing exactly. field yeah. Um, yeah so I got on that and then a week later they sent me the picture of the first cup of tea they had with it with, with me in the bath in it so it's not fully naked I mean like I am not wearing any clothes but it's only up to about here do you know mm. what I mean Cause to be honest which is where all the good bits of my body stop like I'm I'm pretty happy with all this mm. and then it just below here it's like oh do you know what if I could just move my dick up here <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be absolutely fantastic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> old dick neck <laughs> <McGivin> <laughs> <over> there. <laughs> there's a lot of people with some quite vaginal necks you know me and Trump oh if me and Trump kissed she it would be like fucking <laughs> 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 he's oh getting my God. pretty vaginal in the old neck area isn't he yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's, that's, that's how you show your age now that's, <laughs> that's, <yeah. laughs> that's, that's, that's my girlfriend always says every time I go here she looks young for you and she goes look at the neck <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like that's fuck the she's 70 like. <laughs> do you ever see that pictures of the, the, the old woman who's like like, she's like 80 years old but she says she's used sun cream every day of her life and, and she looks like she's 80 she looks like 50 and then like obviously she doesn't use it in her neck so it's like young 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 and then just old as fuck oh, just like ball this, sack just... right these shoulders have seen things and this, <laughs> this head has not and I just think that's dead impressive I keep meaning to start using sun cream and my, but yeah. then I don't really leave the house very much anyway so do you know what I use uh, nature sun cream I use co- I <laughs> Facts. I use cocoa <laughs> butter and I fucking love it. Like I, I smell, smell good and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and, uh t- 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 nearly got Did it. Did you again. just? Oh man! No, I thought no you were gonna this, be this episode's gonna be like that episode of Breaking Bad. Oh, <laughs> were you two are talking and I'm just episode. running about off their flight. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, was it not something to do like with that episode where they like ran out of budget or something and they were like, we only have this one room to shoot in? I think it's called a bottle episode though. I think every series has a bottle. bottle episode. So bottle episodes are just like I think it 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 um speaks to the realism of the show where it's just like boring shit happens too let's just watch him uh, there's, there's an I, episode I, of I think fam- that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's an episode of Family Guy like that where Stewie and Brian get locked in like a safety deposit box uh-huh. bank and uh, in Brian's safety deposit box they only have like a bottle of wine uh, 
something else and like a gun mm-hmm. so they're just like you know an, or like a needle or something i can't remember what exactly they have but they're like they're just they just get blocked off the wine and just like because they get locked in it and they're like here pierce my ear you know like, <laughs> just doing drunk guy shit but i, I love shit like that I, I think the whole thing of the bottle episode is to lock two characters together and go how far can we push them like what will they do if they're stuck in each other's company for like 38 oh, hours okay, or okay, okay. so yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of like user hectic in a way like yeah. user hectic's like basically you guys s- sit together for like an hour a week for a very long time until you hate each other really yeah. <laughs> until one of us says a slur <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we learned we learned how to deal with that as well like, like now Supi will like leave like after the podcast yeah. <laughs> see before we used to sit there like four in the morning <laughs> like, by like we used to sit like I, I hear if we were doing it at the weekend I'd do it again but uh, oh, it, certainly. it was uh, if we were drinking I would do it again I'm drinking <laughs> but you aren't um, but like I, I'm like it was like like we used to make music as well it was just after the PC fucked itself we were like ah. Oh, Shit uh, the bed a wee bit here, yeah. but uh, we're dr- trying to get back into it because we definitely like we we were doing great with it, you know, and uh, it was whenever like I remember just looking at my watch one time going, "Supi, it's fucking three in the morning. You have to drive to New York." Well, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm working the next day and shit, like you know, <laughs> idiot. That was, that was when I was working as well. No, so no. It was like, you know, hey, what do you work as? I you, you like to say working a call center. Ah, what well, for? For something soul crushing or not a call center? Not a call center. <laughs> <laughs> now there are calls that come through. Okay. And we provide a service. Oh, okay. Similarly. So, so, yeah. <laughs> is it, ah, okay. It's just before you said that word, I was like, I, all I'm picturing is a sex chat line. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a, me off. User yeah. sex stick. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, imagine, imagine me on the screen being like, well, no, we already did the sketch money. You know? I, know, <laughs> I know. I was, I was, gonna, I was thinking about the, like, oh, what can I say? It's funny about that. I was like, they've literally just done it. But um, <laughs> do you know, I know someone who used to be really addicted to sex lines. Uh, it's a mutual friend. I'll tell you after. But I, uh, <laughs> Like he used to be addicted to sex lines, and he told me this story once about how he was on this, he was ringing the sex line, and he fell asleep, ah, and he woke up God. in the morning, and they hadn't hung up on him because what? free income, basically. Oh, yeah. You Jesus. know what I mean? And I was like, she was probably fucking. She was probably just doing her teeth. She was probably just <laughs> like, she was probably drinking a cup of tea and fucking just getting ready to face the day. Well, <laughs> well, he's probably waking up with his hand down his pants with a bill for like a grand or something. And Mike Vesuvius you know? in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Day just keeps getting worse. Than <laughs> it. I heard this story actually that just made me think of it was on 9 11. Apparently, early in the day, someone in a hang glider hit the Statue of Liberty. And I thought, I mean, first of all, that guy's probably really grateful about what happened later in the day because he's like, well, that's not going to be in the news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Thank God. Yeah. Like <laughs> but there's probably people who saw both those things. And it's just like, this is escalating too fast, isn't it? It's <laughs> like there's the fucking, there's the hang glider in the morning and two planes in the afternoon. Like, what's happening? Uh, yeah, then? fuck Apollo 11 comes in. <laughs> 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 there's a fucking drone. <laughs> Gets hit by a paper plane later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See that guy who is unfortunate enough to hit Sasha and Liberty? Yeah. Saved by the bell. Like, <laughs> you, would, you would have been the biggest thing in the news. Like, <laughs> yeah. he, he went home and was like, Active terrorism. Like, <laughs> like, in such a bittersweet way. Oh, thank fuck for that. Every single year, he's like, waiting on someone to say it to him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's yeah. Another year free. And yeah, forget. Exactly. <laughs> as well as that, uh, speaking of 9 because uh, it's, it's 9 26 at the minute, so yeah, yeah. Uh, not time wise, but uh, <laughs> date wise. But uh, I, I remember every 9 11, every <laughs> night. I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> but, uh, make a wish. Uh, someone, uh, I know it's a famous story, but apparently. Uh, Speaking of Family Guy, Seth MacFarlane, who made Family Guy, was supposed yes. to be on the flights. Yeah, I heard He was supposed to be on the flight to New York that day. Yeah. And uh, slap in because he was hungover after drinking with, like, a comedian or something, you yeah. know? And I was like, imagine, imagine. Yeah. But he was only, like, that was because Family Guy started in 1999. Mm. So he was, like, on his third year of fame. So that was, like, fucking... You know, he was like in his Ooh. like Richard Pryor era. You know, yeah. like <laughs> like he was like just he wasn't Dragon. jaded yet or anything. He was just peaking, yeah. and that could have just been a fucking Kobe Bryant story. Like you oh, know, yeah, where, you're that just, been huge. where you're just like, holy shit, he's he's dead. Like that's yeah. Yeah. but it, it wouldn't we wouldn't even be speaking about it if that makes sense at this moment. Time, yeah, you were, because you would, wouldn't have be stopped. As, it? You wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, remember that show in the nineties, Family Guy? Yeah, he wouldn't Instead have been of, holy shit, Family Guy. Yeah, did you ever hear that story actually about Marky Mark Mark Wahlberg? He was going. He said he said he the Vietnamese. Dude in the He's, face. <laughs> no, I didn't hear that. Actually. I'll, I'll tell you after. Go ahead. I heard uh, whenever they were talking to him about 9 11, he said, Would have been a different story if I was on this. <laughs> 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 it's like, you yeah. fucking absolute pop talker, mate. 
Yeah, I mean, that's what it was. That's tell you this, if I was on that fucking plane. Yeah. <laughs> like, I had a fucking deck to I had a fucking deck I had a spark to count out. It's, <laughs> it's like whoever wrote that, uh, do you remember that sketch? The fucking I'm East Linfield Supporters Club. Oh, yeah. great. <laughs> what, oh, what the fuck Great when you say it, but now when you watch it back, you go, it's been done 20 million times. Was that Dry yeah. Your Eyes? Was it? I think that was. I think so, yeah. That was early really Dry Your Eyes. Uh, what does he say, though? <coughs> it's not um, the woman, the, the, the woman that's with him, I just love the way she says Tenerife. Tenerife. <laughs> 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 We're going at Tenerife. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Nice. Such a cracker. Uh, yeah. Aye. So 9-11. Fuck, how do we get on to that? Vietnamese. Vietnamese. Here, listen, I don't care how, but we're here now. We're here now. We're <laughs> you have here to live now. in the moment. Look, yeah, um, no, you're right. Have you had any near-death experiences yourself? Have you ever had an experience <laughs> or like an experience where you go, that could have been me sort of thing? Um not really. I, I've never really been at any particular risk that I can think of. I did, uh, like, I, I, I talked about it on a different podcast, but I, I got in a fight with somebody once in the street when the, and there were bottles brandished, like, mm-hmm. but, um, and it was over. I thought you said branded, sorry. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it like, you hit me with a fucking harp class. There was a, <laughs> there was a woman involved and everything, and I was the other man, and I didn't realize till that night as well, and I showed up and he was there, and she was like, This is my boyfriend, Luke. And I went, Ah, I'm her friend because <laughs> um, we weren't very serious. Yeah, and uh, and so I was like, oh, okay, right. I wish I'd known this, but all right. And then uh, and then he sort of figured it out, and he had been, and then he was getting a bit handsy with her, and we had a fight uh, because of that. But yeah, um, uh, when was and, this? Oh, 2013. And then we were wrestling over my phone because I was calling the police and all. And then fucking... Uh, and then uh, I picked up a bottle and I was waving it about. And he picked up a bottle and he was waving it about. And it's like, <laughs> none, neither of us knew how to fight. I like, yeah. I was a bit worried when it started because I was like, I don't know how to fight. And then within a couple seconds of us fumbling about, I was like, I oh, don't, don't worry. This guy's a fucking gimp. As well. yeah, <laughs> we're, yeah. Both, we're both gimps here. It's probably he's like, both just having a mud fight right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this woman's probably like the most embarrassed she's ever been to fuck either she, of us. She, she's so buzzing as well. Two guys are going to fight over me. <laughs> and they're oh, like, these two guys are slipping on their own sweat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fucking dealing shade. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, that's that's a nightmare. See, the whole fighting thing. I I fought a member of the traveling community before, right? Wow. And um, uh, aim, no, they would surely know. Yeah, all oh, they yeah yeah because they box from a young age and they have to fight each other and stuff. It's like a pride thing. But no, I grew up boxing with them. Yeah, so, <laughs> but I, I, it was one of the things where and it was so stupid of me and I was so impressionable because I hung around with a lot of older ones in my in my um estate that were the same age as my brother and we were just all sitting over by the big patch of green one day and um. It just goes, Stephen, uh, Paddy just called you fat. And I was like, well, that's all I needed to know. Like, you know, like, I, I tapped, <laughs> him, on, bitch. I tapped <laughs> him on the shoulder, right? No one, no, you know when you're doing something, you're like, this is fucking stupid. Like, why am I doing this? And I kind of knew I was only doing it because they wanted it, whatever. Didn't fully believe it even they called me fat either. Tapped right. him on the shoulder, he turned around, and I hit him a leg kick for some reason, right? <laughs> <laughs> I did, I, I thought, I don't know, an idiot. And then I remember both of us putting our hands up. And I, like, went to boxing a wee bit. I was always, like, in me- wee silly scraps with my friends and all, but nothing serious. But I remember thinking, oh, I might have a go here, I might get beat, but at least I'll uh, the, the pride will take me forward. Sure. How many seconds are we talking This here? guy hit me with a straight left I didn't see coming. And I remember just, I remember just seeing this guy, and I just ran home crying. Uh, I was I, I must have been, like, nine or something, you know? But oh, I, remember, nine. I was, I was quite young then. I thought, uh, you, might yeah. like, no, no, I, this I thought is, you were, like, 19 yeah. in the school. No, but just, that just reminded Tyson me of Fury, it. Like, as well. Yeah, no, no, that, that just reminded me of when you are saying you had a clue how to fight. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, but I remember just... I remember standing there, and before he even threw a punch, I remember being like, I'm going to get fucked up here. Like, why did I... Do? And then, after that, being like, right... If there's ever the idea of a fight on the cards, I'm choosing my bottles wisely here, yeah, like, you know, yeah. because yeah, it was fucking so stupid. Like, you gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold know them. When to fold them <laughs> I tell you, I did actually have a new death experience recently uh, when I put some goujons in the oven and <laughs> fell asleep, and then I woke up and there's smoke in my house Shit. and someone called the fire brigade as well and the fire brigade it's are smoky, going it's smoke like, detectors it's like, <laughs> word shit bro it's so shit well that was what woke me up but it was like uh, it, it, you know other people's near death experiences are like fucking getting held at gunpoint by Somali pirates or whatever and I'm like I just forgot my fucking goujons man. Yeah. <laughs> and then like the, the fire brigade came and they they had to like find the source of the fire even though I was like I'm fine and they took it out and there's this blackened goujon and the, uh, looked at me with such that's the worst part of my story such pity as if well, to say like 
do you, you live like this? And I was like, my brother and your died like this. Yeah. This fucking Brother's grim. still good. Give me the, the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> <in> my park. <laughs> now that's going to be fossilized with the wanking man. <laughs> <laughs> they're in a fucking, they're, they're in like a shelf in like the Natural History Museum next to the Vikings' biggest turd. <laughs> Did you ever see Rasputin's dick? Yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. No, I, I looked it up Schwab after. Is it, is it Russia's greatest love machine? <laughs> <laughs> Here, you'd Russia's be surprised. It's about fucking, fucking 14 inches machine. soft. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a toughie like it's a but the guy was like six foot nine like yeah. skinny as fuck right, but right, he, right. he was a I, I watched it i watched that movie the king's man Aye. the prequel to the king's man movies and uh, i was like rasputin and apparently he was like a fucking pedophile for young boys as well nobody ever talks about that oh he's no he's undoubtedly evil like, yeah, like he was a, he was a vile man like right, you yeah. know, like a weird dude because i watched it and i goes this guy's fucking flirting with a 17 year old boy and he's the fucking go to jail like Aye. and then i was like oh, i googled him and i went oh he's way worse like yeah oh he's, <laughs> yeah he was a nightmare like and then uh, whenever i, I was like i was like oh like you know the uh like recommended searches on like Google. you like search something and then like above where it says like images and stuff it's like did you mean or whatever did it you mean like, Rasputin's dick <laughs> Rasputin's penis and I looked it up it's in a jar the jar's about that size man and yeah. it's like touching each end of it yeah tea jar. Oh, <laughs> yeah yeah like whenever he goes to the toilet it's not just touching it's the water vase. it's like touching the water in someone else's house you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's coming out of someone man, else's it's toilet it's through the U-band yeah. 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 It's, that's, that's, it's impressive it's, that's the fucking blue green algae problem in Loch Ness. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was no. just his, like half of his shafts in it you know he was brought half on. it's still on him he's brought in to like heal the, the Russian prince's haemophilia with some dark magic shit and it's like I mean he probably had blood to spare himself he yeah but blood, then he started blaming it and he was like you, like the only way you can solve this is by going to war big man you know like yeah. that was like or like no it was staying out of the war it was because yeah. obviously it was like what was the Russian kings like fucking uh, son or something wasn't it yes, or, yeah. and he was like basically <laughs> and he talked to William Thompson or fucking Ross Mitchell about this. This is their topic, you know. This Aye. is their this is their uh, what's that show? The Mastermind. That's their oh, Mastermind yeah. Yeah, topic. Yeah, special subject. Yeah, but uh, like they like he literally was talking to the king. He was like, "Here, I can save his life here, big man, but it it's means you, you just have to not go to war with the Germans." And he was <laughs> like, "But we need to save these." And he was like, "Nah, listen." You can't do it. He's like, yeah. Imagine if you went to the mechanic and he's like, it's going to cost you, mate. And you're like, how much? He's like, Yugoslavia. The <laughs> <laughs> <Z> Ukraine. <laughs> and he's like, oh, fuck. Oh, well. You're going to do it for Czech Republic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now here, you're going to have to call the breakers there in, in Balmoney to see if they have any parts for a child there just to replace your son. <laughs> Listen, I was checking. He's overdosed on something there and also I was checking his ankles while I was out there. And uh, he's... Uh, <laughs> He's not in good neck, so he's not. We might have to just work on his elbows while we're at it. Now, did you say he was a Virgo? Or <laughs> <coughs> ah, fuck, he's a Cancer. Here we go. This is where uh, it all yeah. begins. <laughs> now you're gonna leave him with me for a few days. Here, I'll get yeah, that road safe. Right. But if you want to take me to sign this wee waiver here, right? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, star sign wise? I'm not an astrology man, but I do kind of like. I do kind of like. You know, the idea I, I like pretending that it matters. You know, yeah, I like yeah. I like to convince myself that it matters sometimes. It's what it's uh, what do you call that? Where, where your bias um, confirmation bias? Ah, uh, yes, that's what. It um, is. I was already about to say. What do you call a thing where your bias is confirmed? <laughs> 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 uh, I'm Libra, but I. No, you not to get all mental health, but with OCD, your whole thing is basically to put these patterns together and then sure. obsess and co compulse over them, <laughs> right? Which is yeah. mad, but. I find myself you know, when I was younger being like, like you know, good things are coming or something. And like my mom made lasagna, I'm like, good things did come, you know. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then all of a sudden I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm like, fuck, this could be dangerous because they're so vague and it's again confirmation bias and whatever. So I, I had to make a decision when I was younger to be like, when I was like training myself not to believe the fucking stupid thoughts, be like. That's not true now, you know. Right. And I like toying with the idea, but even like the, what do you call the whole angel num angel numbers thing and all? It's tied into that. that. But I've heard about that. It's all tied into it where it's it's like uh, synchronicities, basically. Where oh, like I if you see like, like I I love looking at lights, spits, like I know that's Aye. fucking mad, but I um, do that too. I yeah, love looking at lights. I I memorize them like, but see if you say like, two sevens together, two sevens could right, mean right. something. I I don't know what I don't do it like that. I just make funny memes out of it. You know, there's a there was a fella drove past me the other week and it said something like fucking like it basically spelled sex addict, but it was like four D D T, you know? <laughs> and it was like five three CK or something. Yeah. And I was like, his number plate says sex addict and I yeah. was like, that is cool as fuck. But <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um but yeah, that's the thing. there was actually a Porsche uh 
nine eleven that literally had a fucking uh, around nine eleven around Yuri that said nine eleven was the was the license plate. Nice. And apparently, people used to contact him all the time to bat it off him because like. I don't know if it's a, well, they want if it's it, a yeah. never forget thing Popular or uh, yeah. Yeah. the fiver with AK forty seven on it. That was the, <laughs> it's like, the big one. It's like whenever yeah. it's like, he buys it in nine ten thousand and one and he's like, No one will want this. <laughs> and the next day he's like, You're never gonna fucking get it. <laughs> but uh, I just thought it looked like a nice date. <laughs> I didn't want to forget it. <laughs> like like our emergency service, you know. <laughs> but um yeah, so but yeah, in terms of uh, yeah, I'm a Libra, but I don't know see See the whole Sorry. moon thing. <laughs> See the whole like m- moons and the way you, what you're born a certain time. That thing that all confuses me. I understand the monthly horoscope and the Daily Mirror, sure, like sure, but, yeah. you know, yeah. The I telegraph. Yeah. I love I love obsessing over a wee coincidence as well because like my car broke down three times there in three months, and I was like, here that's a coincidence. I think the world's trying to tell me something. It's like it's trying to tell me not to drive. It's trying to tell me I'm a bad driver. Is what I think is happening yeah. here. It's just it just or keeps get fucking a up. new car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or stop 100%. going to the mechanics in Russia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> It's a wee panda, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You've had that as long as I've known you as well. Yeah, uh, so. it's a, c- a couple of years now. I think about two or three years I've had it. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I should have, I should have just bought one in July. But a new, uh, a car because like the amount I've spent fixing it since July is now more I, than the pr- price of the car. Yeah. yeah, I say that to him about it. Like his is the same. Like I, like Seriously. literally every single time. It, like There's anytime we there. haven't had a, an episode out, it's usually super going. Cars fucked, cars and I'm like, fucked. bro, fi- get and a new one. No, it's not. See, the last time a car was fucked, uh, the head gasket went right, and uh, <laughs> it's hilarious because the mechanics they bring it to that don't let you down easy at all. Like, right, oh, yeah. you know, they're just they're, they're like hard, two country men, and they're just hard as nails, and the. They could have retired a long time ago, but they're just in it for the love of the game. Like, <laughs> wiping the, ha- the, the, the grease off their hands with a towel. Oh, no, yeah. it's not. I'm going to be honest with you here. You're broke as fuck. No, <laughs> honestly, don't, you're broke, bitch. These yeah. boys. You're about your wallet. Is that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These boys don't even wipe the oil off their hands. Like, yeah. They'll hand the key back. It's dripping. Like, uh, yeah. But he'll, he'll pull up. And, and then there's oil, too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and then he'll just go. Ah, she's <laughs> fucked. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong? Ah, she's not. That's fucked. And I'm like, well, I'm like, ah, fuck. I'll see what I can do. Leave it up here for next week. And then, like, I. <laughs> Eat grand later. I, yeah. Uh, my, oh, yeah. My bumper was hanging off, and I thought he was going to put it back in, you know, like, with a plastic weld or the way he meant to do it. Nope. Mm. But just screwed her straight in. <laughs> 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 here. Yeah. yeah. I remember <laughs> you showed up the Martins. <laughs> just, and he was all, not the front of the car. And I walked over and looked at the car, and there was two bolts on it <laughs> holding the bumper. And yeah. I was like, bumper's not going anywhere, man. <laughs> Like, why the fuck's your bumper hanging off? I mean, we're talking about angel numbers and superstitions. Like, that's a card held together by the secret, isn't it? That's just wishful things <laughs> yeah. holding that together. That so, is, yeah. yeah speak, but see, let's go ahead. No, sorry. Go I was going to say, just even my car. Like, so the last time I was fucked and I couldn't, I couldn't come up because I was head gasket went and I put this like, uh, you can put this fluid in the in the um, coolant that will seep through to the head gasket and seal it because when it gets to a certain temperature, right, whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, put it in. And then I was going to be podding th- th- the next night, and I just says, listen here, I don't know what the crack, because at this stage I was thinking, I'm going to get like a week out of this car, and I'm going to have to buy an one. So I goes, listen, I'll, I'll only do fucking, I, I, don't take, don't make any unnecessary journeys, like, you know, trees and money and shit out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, and then it's just still going. Literally from that we ah, bought like a 15 quid bottle of thing, and usually head gaskets are like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of effects, not worth the, the value mm. of the car. Like, so yeah, and the, the yoke is fucked, like, but it's <laughs> it's a good fuck where it's like, uh, uh, it's not unsafe fucked. It's uh, just, I know. It's got character. It's got character. It's, it's the same things. <laughs> we we yeah. drove to, was it, we went to Lavery's one night. Was the time I was gigging in Lavery's? Was that the time even, we went down? I don't even mind. Did we just go down to watch one? No, time? I think we went down to watch one time. I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was. And uh, we, like, <laughs> you were like, don't mind the noise there. And I was like, bro, I've been listening to the music so loud, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> yeah. like we had the music like turned like right up. Like, yeah. And Super was like, don't mind that noise there. And I was like, bro, all I've been able to hear is fucking the baby for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, just talking about like star signs and all, uh, that's why I get like so into it because the only reason I relate to mine is because I am very much known to be short tempered and hold grudges and blah blah blah. Oh, yeah. Things like that. Like without my fa- throughout my family, my friends, but whoever. Uh-huh. You you even know at this point, like I'm I'm very much like a, if you fuck me over I'll I, I you're like I do not give a fuck, like I'll ruin your life, right. you know. All right, yeah. Yeah, I actually might need to because I'm still. I'm like, boys, just be me at some point. Yeah. Um. But uh, I'm not cutting the set. So niche, so niche. Fair play. But uh, no, uh, like if you listen to this podcast early on, you know the crack. But um, the but I'm a Scorpio, right? 
and the whole thing I said that like such a drunk person I was like yeah, I'm a Scorpio, Scorpio <laughs> and uh, but I'm a, I'm a Scorpio and uh, the whole thing about Scorpios is that that's their personality traits mm. and like sometimes I'm always like I hear like the generic ones like oh if you're if you're a fucking I, I don't even I, don't, I can't think of any other ones Capricorn um, a Capricorn yeah. you're a hard worker and then it's like you know the next two ones down it's like oh you're a hard worker and you're going oh these are all generic as fuck like it's, you're just listing listen personality traits that every person I think everyone shares on. traits everyone shares those traits yeah, and it's they, called a Barnum statement yeah exactly Something that applies to everyone but feels extremely specific like um, you've thought of writing a book someday Exactly. Or, uh, sometimes you can uh, you can be very kind, and sometimes like what fucking you can psychic quite... mediums do, you know? Like, right, exactly. Yeah. You know, sometimes sometimes you're you're very sweet, and then other times, you know, if somebody crosses you, they, then it, you can be more aggressive, and yeah. you know, it's like, well, you've just said I can be nice or bad. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, 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 welcome, to welcome to the human fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 welcome <laughs> to having fucking hormones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, like so, my like mine is always the Scorpio ones are always just like, oh, you're angry at someone today, and I'm like, I'm fucking pissed off. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm human. What do you mean? <laughs> Pisces meant to be imaginative and horny. I think that's the one I am, isn't it? The, yeah. the two fish, and they're always going, "Oh, very creative and very horny and like very toxic and everything." And I'll well. tell you one thing: he's wrote some good jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't seen I've the had, other side yet. Had some incredible wanks. <laughs> <laughs> so here, see, stiff as a board. <laughs> see, see what you're talking about. You were talking about what is it? A Barnum theory? Do you say a Barnum, Barnum statement? Barnum statement. From Sorry, PT Barnum. This reminded me of a question that I actually had in my, in my mind here as well. Just given your line of work, oh, yeah. which is exactly what is the, uh, the old, on the old suicide hotline well I've got two jobs right I'm a, I'm a uh, my bread and butter is I'm on a suicide hotline yeah that's 24 hours a week so that's uh, it, three eight hour shifts that's how he knows Lo- me love it what's that that's how he knows me that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's how we're so close Lord <laughs> Robinson did a good roast of me there the other day at the, at the roast of Willie where it was like uh, Lee McGibbon works on a suicide hotline every night uh, he sits by the phone and people call up and try and convince him not to kill himself <laughs> uh, that's great but, I'd have <laughs> really said good. not get high off your own supply <laughs> <laughs> so that's my bread and butter and then the rest of the week I um I well I'm as what's known as a sessional counselor, so that means I just choose my own hours, and that's with oh here uh, that's fucking that's with an agency that is sort of contracting off the NHS, so it's NHS people, so it's right. only six sessions of CBT, and out you go, which I don't love because CBT is not my favourite, and six sessions is pretty short, yeah. but I, I do it. And, so uh, yeah. if you don't want me asking, why is CBT not your favourite? Um, I think well, I mean, it depends who you're working with ultimately, because yeah. you know, I, I, my this, when I'm saying my favorite, I mean to work on myself. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, I think you know, CBT would have been really helpful to me as a teenager, or maybe in my early twenties. Yeah. And now as an adult, I'm more into sort of um, sort of psychoanalytic ideas, which are more like unconscious stuff, dream analysis, and all that shit. Like uh, transactional analysis stuff, I got as well. I like a bit of transactional analysis like the odd time too. Yeah. CBT because uh, yeah. uh, because of your one joke, yeah. I, I can't think of the actual term. It's quote. Was it uh, uh, cock and ball torture? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I, yeah. <laughs> the the what's the first word of it? Cock. No, the uh, cognitive, uh, co- cognitive, cognitive. Cognitive. What does that mean? Sorry. So that uh, basically means in the mind. So it refers to, oh, refers right. to thoughts. Okay, so, okay. You know, behavioral And then behavioral yeah. stuff you do. So, yeah. and like, it's probably the more most sort of scientific and, and, and rationally minded form of therapy because everyone has thoughts. Everyone does stuff. Exactly. It sort yeah. of goes, well, how can we work on these thoughts? How can we work on this stuff that you do? So um, basically yeah. how, how your thoughts interact with your behavior and yeah, how, yeah, yeah. How, yeah and like it basically you know uh, an example I would sort of give to just do a quick explainer for people whenever I do the first session is usually like well um I mean, because it, it's not just thoughts and behaviours, those are the two main things, but say, in, in any situation, you know, your thoughts can influence, uh, say, your behaviours, your feelings, and, and how you feel even physically, you know, so like, if, you, uh, if you're at a party and you meet someone and they're quite quiet, you might think, oh, I'm boring them, and then you'd feel sad, or you might think, um, they're being rude to me, and that'll make you feel angry, or, yeah. you know, you might think they're very shy, and that might make you feel compassionate, and it's like, you know, all those, th- like, that's three different emotions for for something that none none of those might be true their thoughts yeah. you know that could be i mean the person could just be sick they could have a stomach ache yeah. or they could have something else on their mind and so you know they uh, could really love you and they could love you want to, yeah you know they don't mean? want to express like, it yeah, yeah and really then like that can affect you physically because if you if you think that someone's uh, being rude to you and makes you angry it can make you tense and so physically you know it can make your heart beat faster or yeah. if you think i'm having a heart attack your heart will probably beat faster which can make yeah. you think you're having a heart attack even more yeah and uh thoughts can influence your behaviors because then if you 
see that person from the party again a week after, you're probably going to try and avoid them. And then if you avoid them, then that ingrains uh, a certain associated behavior with that person. It's like the Pavlov dogs thing. That's sort of the proto behaviorist. Is like kind of the like you now associate that person with avoidance, and then um, you you know you become more scared of them because it's like yeah. oh that's the guy I avoid. Um, and, and so, you're just in this yeah. echo chamber continuously. Oh, continuously. Own. And like all of these things influence each other. So you can work on thoughts of someone. You can work on behaviors. You can work on the physicality. You can work on um, feelings, mm -hmm. and and all of those will influence each other. But usually we just start with the thoughts because um, that's pretty pretty. It's probably the simplest place to start with and the most immediate. Yeah. But uh, you know, no form of therapies for everyone. Like uh, you know, you, you you different people need different stuff. Some yeah. people like cognitive behavioral therapy because it's very active. You know, there's a lot of goals and stuff you it's, can it's do. It's very on the body too as well, isn't it? Yeah, the physical side of things. Mm. There would be some stuff there. Usually, it's just progressive muscle relaxation. But there's other things that you can do. Ties in the mindfulness kind of. Ah, uh, yeah, as well, yeah. I suppose it? so. Yeah. I there's a lot of ties into that though. I I I think the thing with mindfulness is you have to be real careful when you're sharing that with people because um. You, you well you you want to not say the same stuff that everyone's been saying to them because yeah. then they'll write off everything else you say because yeah, like yeah. fucking uh, before he went all right wig russell brand seemed like the sort of person who it's like if you told him your dog had fleas he'd be like have you tried mindfulness it's like you tried some yoga like, <laughs> would you ever fuck up like yeah. like so a lot of people have been depressed have been told about mindfulness and things like that and so if you want to try and get them into it or work through the through things with mindfulness with them you really have to put it to them in a different way very quickly yeah and so um or win their faith with other things that might other tools yeah. or build the relationship like i mean like the thing is all the research says there's not really any specific like research does tend to slightly favor cbt but yeah. um what i think it's because more broad maybe. it's very it's pretty broad yeah and like there's 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 something for everyone in there now yeah <laughs> but like um what what always seems to emerge more than anything is that more so than what kind of therapy you're doing it's always about the relationship that makes the difference so like if you ever have bad therapy um, doesn't necessarily mean that therapy is not for you. Maybe that therapist is not for you. Because in, yeah. in the same way, you're not going to get on with every person that you ever meet in life. Yep. You know, not every crowd that you perform stand up comedy to is going to love you. Yeah. Um, same with every, like, for just for crowds, every comedian you go to see is not going to. Just because right. you watch one comedian doesn't mean comedy shit. You know, like, exactly. And in the same way, it's about, you know, it's about forming a relationship. And so, you know, sometimes the best comedians are the ones that you feel that connection with, you know, yeah. in, in, in that same way. And so when therapy is bad, um, I would encourage you to maybe try somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily a failure on your part, or even really ther the therapist's part, though. Maybe probably is on their part, but it's about what's between you. Yeah. So in the same way, if I have a bad gig, I don't necessarily go and blame myself. I don't necessarily go and blame the crowd. I blame what's between us. We didn't gel, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like every crowd can be winnable. Like it literally, like think of the worst crowd you've ever had. Yeah. And then slap somebody famous in there and they probably would have done all right but like that's not necessarily out of skill that's because they're famous i guarantee just to put a pin in that for a wee second yeah. i guarantee the worst gig i've ever done yeah. nobody could have done well <laughs> it was a uh, ruby's bar oh i heard about that Don one donald then. yeah and uh it was me franco McAlevey and giffen yeah and uh, i heard pete was like i'm not going on yeah the, exactly the promoter was like and fair enough here if you're listening to this pete you got paid more than the rest of us so uh, <laughs> and, uh i'll just leave that out there out um, of the deal yeah here and I, I i was on last i was I, technically the headliner <laughs> um, but, <laughs> uh so and it was but that's here do you know fucking what they said? The shit is gig. <laughs> it was said there's always a silver lining. Uh, the Portside Inn came about because of that gig. So if I didn't do that gig, the Portside Inn wouldn't be a thing. So nice. and the Portside Inn, not everyone always enjoys it. You've done it a couple of times. I and had a good one and I had a bad one. I think. You had a good one and a bad one. Uh, you're also welcome back anytime if you ever want okay. a spot. Um, because uh, like, anyway, but uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, but like the Portside Inn came out a lot. But that was like a gig. Rubies. I guarantee. Do you know how I know because. Haggerty, Butler, and Dave Elliott yeah. all told us, like all four don't of do us, it. don't do it, don't yeah. do it. And I was like, fuck you, you you're old. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're old. You don't know the new It's comedy. better to find out for yourself anyway. Yeah, and then we did it. And then looking back, I'm like, nobody could have done well at that. No. Like, what that room was. That in was my the head, most. though, I think, if, say, Michael McIntyre suddenly sauntered up and was like, I fancy doing a wee spot at this at this gig. He probably would have killed, but not out of skill. The card would have gone. Holy it's fuck. Michael McIntyre, and yeah. they would have paid attention all of a sudden. Here, so if, like if sometimes the, that's the missing ingredient is being somebody who's already famous, yeah. not skilled. You have this. It kind of comes back to what you're saying about if you try to shove mindfulness. Sorry, if you try to shove mindfulness down people's throats, yeah, yeah. flat out all the time, it kind of comes back to almost the stigma of mental health, right? Where everyone's talking about it now, and they're saying, "Try mindfulness, try mindfulness, sure. try cold water, fucking baths, all yeah, the shit," yeah, yeah. and it 
sort of it becomes a meme then, and then yeah. it's almost like you have less chance of you doing that because you're like, ah, it's a joke, right? And then I started doing cold water baths. I'm like, oh shit, it oh, works. Shit, you know, pretty I, it's good. pretty yeah. good. No, listen, it's not the fucking. It didn't just fix me, you know. But yeah. it's just like, oh, I feel incrementally better, you know. Yeah, and yeah. for the sake of it, but it's kind of like that thing with mindfulness as well, well where sure. like you have to tread very carefully because it's yeah. very close to being I mean, wacky. The problem is being uh, prescriptive. So like. um you know, anyone who's depressed has people prescribing stuff to them. They don't realize they're doing that. Like someone goes to, if you say I'm depressed to someone and they say, oh, have you tried going for a jog? Like the person who's depressed doesn't hear, can you try going for a jog? What they're hearing is, uh, you can't, you're not really depressed because you could go for a jog. Yeah. You know? yeah. And that's invalidating the feeling rather than just letting them, you kind of have to let people be that's sad. You have to make room for that explained. Yeah. Right. That's, okay. That, thank that's, you. that's like, cause every time I think of like something like that, it's always just, Oh, there's an answer. <coughs> yeah. But like sometimes you don't want an answer. But sometimes yeah. you don't like well, even at that, like sometimes it's not the answer you want if you get what I mean. Sometimes yeah. it's like if you get told go for a jog, you could have went for a jog and you go, yeah. Oh, you fucking solved my problems yeah. you know, where it's like that, where it's like, like no, you, like sometimes it's not as easy as just going yeah. which is the exact way that you've described sure. it there. So like they're not necessarily even wrong. Like obviously going for a jog's probably pretty good for your yeah, mental health. Exactly. But it's, like it, it releases it's, endorphins and shit. Right. It's fucking but like physically can... it, it is better for you. Sure. Like like so even like though you might not mentally like you might have something on your mind or whatever. Right. And uh, but if you go for a jog you know, it's almost like a distraction for a couple hours because you've went for the jog, your endorphins are fucking released, your body feels better for it, you've yeah. lost a bit of weight or whatever it is. So in theory, you should have lost a bit of weight, yeah. but that doesn't stop the problem, if you get what well, I mean. Exactly, so. you know, and like ultimately really, you know, it doesn't really matter if the advice that you're given is correct because what they're hearing is is an invalidation of, of, yeah. of their feelings. Exactly. And, and the feeling yeah. needs to be given room, which and is uncomfortable. Is, yeah, and the thing is, two things to be true at once, like this person will be depressed yeah. and of course as you said running will help yeah. but you if I come to you and say oh I'm depressed I'm almost you have to assume that I've obviously thought about going for a run and I've decided not to and I feel sure. so bad because and then I'm you coming to you some stuff like yeah, yeah you'd be like pro they probably tried having a bath when they have anxiety yeah. like they probably yeah. tried that you know so here's another question to you, and my other question to you as well yeah and I, this a lot of this stuff kind of fascinates me and I kind of wish when I was in school I had there was more access to not even like a whole mental health thing but just like I never to, knew any of this shit existed no but to do like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but even like, to do like psychology as a subject didn't yeah. exist as far as I was no, we don't like sociology and shit but yeah. I remember even when I was real young being like it's mad how like even just like transactional analysis like a very very loose understanding of it of like isn't it mad how like I'll say something, yeah, and then you feel something, yeah, you know. Yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. I remember thinking that years ago to be like that's insane that I can just make these noises and then it makes you <laughs> happy, sad, whatever, you know. Sure, sure. But um, what the fuck was I saying with that? Yeah. So I've been sort of trying to educate myself with a lot of this sort of stuff, and even just from a not from a self help standpoint, from a, just a, a fascination Understand. standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what's your favorite <laughs> razor? <laughs> Gillette <laughs> now listen uh, like, they don't call it the best a man can get for nothing yeah. <laughs> my favourite's Occam's are, are we talking shaving or Bic. to kill ourselves <laughs> no 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 I'm talking like uh, like schools of psychology like Occam's razor oh right oh I get you yeah, yeah. no Harry you can't beat Occam you know it's the simplest solution isn't it the, yeah 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 I can't even remember some of the other ones you know Here, they you were more philosophical lost me. I have no so idea what you're there's talking things about. called like razors in like psychology yeah, okay. I, I fully, fully was like I, I was uh, fully like uh, Soupy's what just the fuck Soupy's not giving a fuck about what he's saying anymore <laughs> <laughs> and it's just started like what's your favourite razor blade <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I know I thought you were messing isn't I, it, so there's like uh, don't it's funny talking about mental health and talking about razors but um, like, and exactly, there is a certain amount <laughs> of irony in, like, but it's like don't attribute to malice what could be contributed to or what could yes. be attributed to ignorance or ignorance and then there's I think Occam's razor is also like often the simplest explanation is usually what it turns out is to be. Is yeah, life. yeah. So, what um, the um, that what is what is the name of the razor for uh, for no the don't attribute teams. to malice. What the fuck is that? Uh, uh, yeah, I can't remember that one. Fuck, I know what you mean though. But like they're more philosophical things. That's what it, no, I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's that's kind of my favorite one where it's yeah. just like. Some people aren't being dicks. Yeah, some people are just fucking idiots. Being idiots. Yeah, uh, but they don't. Why are you not being... telling me? That I text you on a daily basis about this sort of shit, <laughs> and you never have said that in return. Never with a razor. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, like I'll always be like, "Here, man, this fella's pissing me off," and so people be like, "Air, what can you do about it?" But see, that's kind of, but that's that's me not wanting to be like. So there's just gonna psychology call on conference, you know. I'm like, yeah, 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 I just want to be. Like, I would listen to you. You know what I mean? I know, I know, but it's kind of that thing of you, you spend you, a week, like a fucking couple hours a week together. <laughs> but it's kind of you don't want to be preaching either. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like absolutely. And I, I, I be, too. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. And then especially like if if I sometimes like if my mates are I I tend to be the one that my mates would come to for for help or support or whatever. And I love that rule. I love that people can sort of approach me with that. Yeah. But sometimes if my mates are discussing an issue amongst themselves and I can get frustrated sometimes and be like, you, I can't use it. it's all sitting right in front of you. You know, it's yeah. sitting right in front of you what, what the issue yeah. is. Yeah. And then I don't want to be like, these are all fucking idiots is this here. So I let it all happen and then I try and well, I think introduce wise. the idea. I think like, uh, well, this is the thing is that, and, and this is why people can be so prescriptive is because the human brain is like a problem solving machine. You know, it's a computer. It's trying to, it's trying to, um, survive. It's, like it is it's trying to find solutions. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the solutions that we give for other people are the things that are uh, invalidating, you know? And so like, sometimes psychotherapy does involve providing solutions or giving them uh, suggestions of things to try and do. But it's important that that doesn't take center stage and be the first thing, you know, people have to feel like they've been fully heard mm -hmm. and that you've allowed them to be like whatever emotion that they've shamed themselves out of feeling mm. in that moment because usually it's an, an emotion that's unacceptable like the, the obvious one is always that people who are grieving usually have some anger and they don't let themselves feel that because it's irrational to go I'm angry at this person left by dying you know <laughs> yeah or, uh, dare they? <laughs> yeah. or like uh, you, you know the, the big one I always remember is is and uh, you know to me it's like men and women so like um, a lot of men express their sadness with anger because the sadness is not something that's very socially acceptable for them mm -hmm. you know that's why you get people who like are sad about something they put their fist through some drywall or whatever yeah the exact, that, like, whenever my nanny died uh when i was like 16 yeah the exact same thing like i uh i never learned how to i, I was never taught in school how to sure. like do emotions or whatever yeah like I, even the teachers were like fucking enablers for the bullies sort of shit you know yeah. but uh like whenever my nanny died i remember literally whenever watching the coffin being brought in and it was like her wake or whatever. And uh, I remember not knowing how to deal with the fact of that. So I walked over and put my fucking fist through a neighbor's fence. 16 Gosh. years old, I put my fist through it. Wow. And I remember, like, looking back on that now, I'm like, I completely... That's what that was, yeah. Uh, I'm like, that, like, I, I would never do that now. Yeah. You know? yeah. To be fair, <laughs> talking a little shit. Look like, <laughs> like you're about to hit soupy there. <laughs> 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 it's a fucking fly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, the, other, the other week, I gave my girlfriend the X something shocking, man. Uh -huh. Something shocking. <laughs> You're not about to confess to violence. No, 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 no. Well, <laughs> a little bit not on her. I wouldn't never in a million years. Um, I wouldn't. I've never even had a thought of that. But uh, mm. I literally, because uh, I'm a fucking victim of it, and I hope she's fucking listening. That's the bitch, not my girlfriend. I love Abby. I love you. <laughs> the other one. You I'm know, confess to domestic violence. I'm just gonna <coughs> accuse. Who let me drink on this? Um, <laughs> but uh, the the other week. <laughs> And it was more anger towards myself because I leaned on my bed with one knee and two of the planks just snapped. Oh, <laughs> and, and I just started punching the fuck out of my bed. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, and I my think that's justified anger. I think that's fair. My girlfriend's just standing in my bedroom watching me. Yeah. And my bedroom is like half the size of this room. It's like, like it's a small room. It's a council house. This is this is an extension because my dad's disabled. So it's like we had an extension nice. built on, but he re he's too stubborn to sleep on it. But okay. uh, yeah. you turned this extension into a podcast. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's, it's not being used. You're you know? fucking take advantage of the housing executive. You know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, whenever we go, his dad's gonna come and sleep in my couch <laughs> <laughs> on this table in an L shape. <laughs> but uh, I, I just started punching the fuck out of the bed, like blacked out that she was even there. Oh, <laughs> and God, she was like, nah. she was like, "Are you done?" And I was like. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to say that. <laughs> I mean, that, make, that makes it, that seems more like that was anger, whereas the 16 year old thing, that must have been really fucking hard for you, man, you know? Because, like, oh, yeah, here, like you saying. fucking shit yourself. In, in one year, my uh, three of my grandparents died. I have everyone has four grandparents, right? Hmm. Uh, the one that's alive is a dickhead. Nah, they always leave the the uh, worst. Oh, he'll yeah, outlive me, the cunt, happen. you know. Like, but uh, I <laughs> like in the in the one year, and it was the reason why I talked about this the other uh, last week with Daniel. The reason why I didn't do my driving test and stuff whenever I was like seventeen was because in the one year my three grandparents died. Oh. Like, like two of them from cancer, one of them like from fucking dysentery I don't know <laughs> she was on the Oregon Trail <laughs> yeah, yeah he's a pioneer <laughs> and, uh, I, thought, I already thought like Oregon donor list like Oregon <laughs> Trail I mean, it's it's just needed it quicker it's big happen there's probably still people here getting cholera you know right there. <laughs> getting <laughs> the old school shit oh like, my dad's got the neighbors are getting scurvy <laughs> fucking <laughs> scurvy <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, like, no the, like that's what I mean and that one year and she was the third 
So it was like whenever she died, it was like I'm fucking sick of this shit. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. And again, I was only I would just become like a young man, so I didn't understand how to fucking deal with. Right. I am a prime example of someone who could very use someone like you if you get what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like uh, really... not to get all corny, but it was good whenever comedy came into my life and you were very. Ah. You know, like, uh, like, cause you obviously we didn't talk about this at all. Luke gave me my first gig, and uh, okay. I didn't win the competition because Kieran Franco was there, the wee wanker. But uh, <laughs> fuck you, Kieran, um, <laughs> and others uh, who I sure, aren't yeah. even here anymore. But yeah. uh, the, he didn't but die. Ninety percent of them aren't here. Anymore. Yeah. I need to look it up. But, but uh, like that, you like that was uh, I. I pretty much am an, an example of someone. Who needed that sort of right place, right time? Like, sure, sure, yeah. Like, I think because I grew up in, uh, you, like, you seen the street? Like, it, it's a street. It's a fucking shithole. <laughs> uh, it's like close the window, maybe. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm the scariest thing here. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's why it's all, the, all the beds are quaking in their boots, <laughs> <laughs> shivering their timbers. Um, but uh, like speaking of scurvy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was a uh, I was a prime example of someone who just could have used that sort of knowledge growing up mm. and uh, I'm 25 now I need you know I probably everyone needs therapy at any stage sure, of their yeah, life yeah, but uh, I, I feel like because I grew up in a place like that with a very self-aware mind I have developed enough sort of self-awareness uh, to like get myself through a lot of things sure so like as much as that's great for people who haven't learned that I feel like I'm someone who could have used it at the time yeah but uh, sort of got through it and have come out the other end better for it in a roundabout way yeah, yeah. but yeah. it took a lot of fucking bullshit to get to that stage it took yeah. a lot of like like it was almost like you know you know when you go through like the the, the wee wire yeah and you're, you're you're it's the wee game and you're like you have a wee operation sort of thing yeah, yeah. and yeah. It, like if you touch the wire yeah. it's like oh zzz, that's it yeah. like I, I could have been like you know like I, I grew up around people like whenever I, I used to do a bit about this where whenever I was younger I was basically a drug mule for people. Right, yeah, yeah. But they lied to me about what the, I was, like, muling. Uh-huh. So, uh, like, I caught have ended up in the... People love their pixie sticks. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you're only 100 and I thought you are meant to eat it, but... Uh, <laughs> so I keep delivering sniffing. these fucking scones, less fucking Deirdre cup. Scones. <laughs> I love the idea that the, the drug's the weight of a scone, or it looks like a scone, and you've got to, got <laughs> that's, to that's it. It's not even know what a dip to have on. I'm not, <laughs> even joking. I'm not even telling a lie here, right? That's exactly what I... You know the wee bags you would get out of the bakery? The wee ah, white yeah, yeah. plastic bags? Greasy, you know? Yeah, yeah. That, they were the bags you used to deliver it in. Imagine but, getting some greasy cocaine. Oh, God. <laughs> It's clumped as well. You have to like break it up like sugar cubes. Exactly. So oh, I, sorry, I, yeah, yeah, you're I, no, no, no. <laughs> you don't have to apologize. To me. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I'm, I think I'm a very lucky case of uh, someone who came out the other end. Made out the hood, like, like, I'm, yeah. I'm, like mentally anyway. Yeah. I'm still yeah. fucking sitting in it. But, uh, <laughs> sure. but like, I think uh, that what you do is uh, what you do, even though sometimes you don't enjoy it. Sometimes you don't. Sorry, it's not the end of the word. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you're, you know, you're like, oh, it's not my favorite. I'd rather do this and all blah blah blah. But uh, I think that that's a thing now. Whenever I was in school, whenever I was growing up, whenever I was like, you know, 19, 20, I didn't know what the fuck any of that was. Like, no one around here knows what the fuck that is. Yeah, yeah. But it's good to know that the 200 smicks that listen to this know that that sort of thing exists <laughs> oh, now, sorry, you know? Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm like very, I'm always buzzing to hear about stuff like that because yeah. I go, there's a million people in fucking, you know, a hundred miles each direction of me right now who would need that but never knew what it even was growing sure, up sure. you know and whereas when I when I whenever I got into comedy and I started talking to people and they were like you never heard of this you know like <laughs> you never heard of therapy and I'm like wait you talked to someone you know like <laughs> you know like I was like yeah. what the fuck you know I was like how did you know about this you know so it's, it's, it's good trying to fucking better yourselves and all it's God. good because yeah. the, 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 the crowd you've met the crowd yeah, for yeah. one night one night down at the pav the crowd who listened to this were down in the front row yeah. there was some crack yeah. and then they like they were great at the roast as well and then they seemed exactly. to do new material to twice and, and really struggle so they probably think I'm dog shit right? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they were fuck they're sound, sound cunts so you know what I mean that, that, that sort of crowd they they grow up in places where nobody gets that sort of thing mm. not to get all cringy and fucking no I get you uh, we don't like, get this you know although yeah. we're class about it but but there, it is a class this thing where there's definitely really really smart people in, among, in amongst those quote unquote smicks right. but that ha- have a hard time dealing with either like neurodivergence or like, maybe like they're fucking geniuses and they can't handle it so they turn to substances and stuff yeah. like that that's, yeah, where, yeah, yeah. that's exactly. where the class that's, thing comes into it where thing. you, you, you know, may yeah. pay, like I know fucking smicks with Ashburgers uh-huh. and they're fucking geniuses but they're like 
they don't know how to deal with it because right, right. they're like, oh, they're, I have Ashburgers, but everyone around me is doing coke, you know. Right. So, the, so rain by, yeah, he's it, counting the grains <laughs> of the coke. Rain by, <laughs> he snorts it and he's like four hundred fifty-seven. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, mate, you're trying. <laughs> he's like, mate, my tracksuit has three stripes. Yours only has four. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. rain by, they're they're they're, they're, <laughs> they're Ashburgers are like what type of fucking Nike or came out that year, you know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, so I, I I do appreciate you saying about that on it because I know I know it's your job and stuff and yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's weird to talk about it on a comedy podcast no yeah i don't get on the old pods that much and sometimes i when i go on i'm like well now which look should i be here should i be comedian look or should i be therapist look you know and i'm i, I, I like I, I don't really have an answer but yeah. I mean, just, if it comes up i'll i'm not gonna shy away i kind of feel the same way as well obviously we're a comedy podcast and uh, we're all like ah fucking pop yeah. wagon man you know <laughs> yeah yeah but i people are gonna be at the end you want to talk, going, that was a roller coaster see the kind of <laughs> you want to talk about your work on the sex line sometimes yeah, yeah of course you know what i mean the, uh, yeah. but like it's one of them things where it's like See, see my downtime or my like I maybe from maybe a comedy set people think I'm like ah oh, he's fucking mad so he is he fucking all loves uh, the, loves the crack and all whereas I'm just sitting listening to the Blind Boy podcast about like Irish, <laughs> myth- Irish mythology and I'm like oh, thank, thank God I get to sit down for two minutes God, <laughs> think, you know what I mean yeah. so, it's like a parent yeah, exactly yeah, like, like, four like when I get, when, when I get when I get up I say oh God oh you know like, but oh, it's kind of that thing God. where I find myself being like I'm like. Because you know, she can get mental on these podcasts. I'm talking about a load, load of shit, and I love it. And then even like with short back and what's happening, I was doing last night. Like them boys are fucking mad in the head. I'm yeah, great crack. I know Adam doesn't listen to this, so fuck you, fuck you, Adam. <laughs> but sometimes so, I'm like, someone sent this to Adam and tell him fuck you. So that's, that's that's why that's I was like, <laughs> whenever I said, whenever I knew you, you were coming on, I was like, I kind of want to ask him about yeah. real shit. Yeah, if yeah, if there's anyone, I mean? that's what I, I said. That. That's what I said about like at the start. Like uh, we didn't talk about it enough. Like. Uh, because we'll wrap it up soon here anyway, because you need to... Oh, yeah, what time are you working, working out, sir? So? It's all good, but... Oh, you're working out? Well, yeah, yeah. we'll get into some yeah. questions after this, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, yeah. we do have a few questions, so... Uh, oh, nice. Um, it's, it's quarter to nine now. Yeah, if if we get you out of here ever. for nine, always, you'll be all right. So who's the worst first gig ever, or the best first gig ever? Uh, yeah, well, literally, I, yeah. I was going to say, you've been you've been in the game a long time, right? Sorry, just put a pen in that. That's what I was going to ask, sorry. It was just to let you know, Luke was the one who gave me my first gig, Uh uh, he's given me a lot of like, advice throughout it. Any advice that I've given this podcast, we usually drool on about like fucking a lot of things that happen with behind the scenes in comedy and stuff. Anything that I've learned, not any of the dickhead things, that's usually my own things. Uh, anything that I've learned that's usually quite neutral or diplomatic, or Luke has taught me that. So, yeah. oh, that's uh, so that's like the Same politics. Yeah, like you're you're I you're. Think I'm your woke consultant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, He's like just woke maybe don't say like, the n word. Yeah, yeah, so literally, like <laughs> I think it was like six months <laughs> into comedy, you were like maybe change that joke from gypsies to something else. Yeah, <laughs> that was yeah, that's what it was because it made, was, made the room tense. <laughs> Yeah. And like I, I mean I I use the word woke but really I mean like sometimes I, I it is hard to tell people to 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 change a joke to make it better and then to not come across as just being like you're not woke enough and I'm like no it's when you say I'm gonna tell a joke about the trans community the room gets tense because that's a tense subject and if you're telling a joke that makes a room tense it needs to be really fucking really, good really to good. justify yeah. the oh, tension yeah. and if it only appeals to people who don't like trans people it's probably not gonna be a good enough joke outside of rooms of people who don't like trans yeah. people like you're, you're not you're like you're Austin, Texas like, right yeah. and so like of course you know my values are we should be nice to trans people but I need to frame it in a way beyond that because if people people don't want to change their jokes yeah, based on no. my values and the thing is as well it's kind of like I get when people are like um, oh I, I don't want to change my art because my art is what it is which is valid but sure. also your art's going to be dog shit and you're trying to make people laugh <laughs> yeah. and no one's laughing yeah, That's, yeah. so you kind of like, need to just like change it the only it, way you, you know? can say that is just going like you, you know you, you think it's your art but at the end of the day it's literally just fucking right. like y- your art might be art but nobody's going to fucking look at it then right, you know yeah. like like this has only ever happened once or twice but I've written a joke that if I've written a joke that's offensive and someone goes to me ah oh, that joke's quite offensive what I'll do is I'll go okay I'll write something else because like Jokes aren't finite. There, you can, you can. Oh, there, there is. It's not the end of the world. There, it, yeah, yeah, there is unlimited as human experience is is, and ultimately, I am doing this to make people happy. And yeah. uh, if I'm making a subsection of humanity unhappy, then I'm like, <laughs> yeah. well, what's the fucking point? You yeah, know what I mean? Like, exactly. obviously, I have the freedom to say it, but what's the point yeah. in saying it? It's comedy, if it's not, you know, it's, if it's, it's meant to be people good. Laugh. Yeah. So, like, so uh, you've again, you've seen troves of people come through, and especially with your your position and maybe your job and background being the. The, the, from the therapy standpoint and the, and the human psychology standpoint you've seen so it makes you more active in the scene from on a personal standpoint sure, sure. even if you even if like I don't speak to you very very often but when I do speak to you it's very like personal but like 
even if it's just like you're like oh I've seen you cut your hair or whatever shit like sure, that so yeah. you do that very well in, in the communities and you're very embedded in there right so I wish I could tell you that you cut your hair I wish that you got the cut <laughs> well <laughs> you said it to me twice so yeah, it changes every hair fucking four it days it's the most controversial thing on the scene <laughs> I'll, I'll say, say whenever I see Soupy he'll, I'll go do you change your hair and he goes I've changed it twice since you see me and I'll go <laughs> I seen you three days ago. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, were you in Belfast on Saturday, by the way? Was it? No. I thought I was behind you in a car because they were combing, there's a guy combing his hair in the front seat. Oh, really? And then, <laughs> and then, I started, you and then he started <laughs> dancing <laughs> as well, and I was like, oh. That's what the baby's playing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just Subi ticking in the front seat. <laughs> but uh, no, so the question I was going to ask you was Aye. who. What is the ma like? Uh, it's not really a direct question. It's just like from all your Asian ex- all your Asian experience. What is? I said all your Asian experience. <laughs> <laughs> I've got oh. bad news for you. I've got really bad news for you. <laughs> oh, I just realised. I doesn't matter. Um, I what is all your Asian experience? Um, youth in Asia, right? <laughs> no, best tofu. <laughs> what What's your um? What's the maddest thing in any way, shape, or form <laughs> you've seen? The big, the maddest death you've seen, or the maddest like, did that guy really think that was going to work? Oh. Or a lot of them are probably me. So uh. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no. Uh, the worst death I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. Was like, and he's uh, I, he's still gigs, and I like him, and he's good now. He's yeah. called, so it doesn't mind me saying this probably, but Ronan Diamond, he's called, and he um, oh he yeah, did his first gig a million years ago. He stopped for years after that because it was so bad. But he he was very drunk, and he couldn't remember anything he said, and he was just sort of blathering and it wasn't really going anywhere and he had seven to ten minutes which is how long all the spots used to be back then <laughs> fucking hell but um Go on the and like, I'd kill for that at like six minutes ross mitchell went up to me he's like just flash him now i was like no he's not hit his time and he was like he will hit his time and i was like mm, okay and like the guy the guy hit seven minutes he keeps going he hits 10 minutes i'm flashing the light i'm a lot he's just ignoring it he can't because he's not aware of it yeah and like the crowd applauds something just for him to leave basically yeah and he hears the applause and he just still sort of stands there <laughs> and like and and like the mc is is at the side of the room sort of going come on come on and he's like just gawping just gawping yeah. and at one point i had like i had to like turn off the lights and turn on the music oh and, it was, that was and he still off. stood there for a while i had to like go up on stage and be like <laughs> just in the pitch hey, black being like what's your uh your opinion on fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just going like come on you'll get him next time fuck sake get oh, off yeah. stage first but, gig uh, too the worst death but there was some really innovative stuff that i really enjoyed I- innovative. there was um uh, Connor McGinley got someone up on stage. Cold thought. Uh, th- <laughs> he doesn't watch us, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, he won't know. But he got someone up on stage and, and they talked about the dildo they had in their bag or something. I can't remember how a dildo got involved, but she pulled out the dildo and he got her to wear the dildo on stage and he sucked it and said, this is what it's like being a comedian. And then he asked me to play the music just as he started sucking and I did. And there's a video <laughs> somewhere in the depths of the Pav Facebook page. I think if you just go to photos, videos, it's probably at the top. Uh, yes, the 14th row down, second video across. Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> I don't know where it is, but <laughs> there was a guy who did a short play about unicorns that involved dildos on their heads, and he got mm-hmm. people from the audience. Right, dildo heavy. He got, he got, yeah, well, I think that was the same night. I think that's where the dildos came from, right. actually, because there was about three or four of them, and, and some of them were fucking whoo. Some of them were biggies, like, and he, he made us <laughs> made us wear them on our head. It was really funny. It was really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, this guy called Adam Turns. He's an actor now. He was in Game of Thrones. Oh, really? bit, yeah, he, yeah. He plays an extra, or because my cousin sort of, was an extra, so. like like big extra, if you know what I mean. Like oh, he right. didn't have a line, but he had like, do you know the waif, the lady who was trying to kill Arya uh, when she was learning to be an assassin. We, it was, yes, the wee girl, yeah. the wee girl, right? Yeah, yeah. And at one point, she disguises herself as a young blonde man with pointed features, and that's Adam. Oh, is that him? That's him. Yeah, Fuck yeah, off! Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, and he did stand up here. Yeah, he was great. He was great. He's yeah. But he I should d- have stuck less because that was him. That yeah, was was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, Adam. Um, you're fucked. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's be honest. You picked. <laughs> so that was that was probably one of the most interesting stuff I've seen um, off the top of my head. I'm sure. If I that's went. crazy. Like, like I only found out. Re- ball, well, I say it? I found out recently. It was like a year ago. Whenever I had Dan Leith in the podcast, that he was the stand-in for Kit. Harrington on Game of Thrones. No way. Yeah, he was like the. I can see that now that's why I named the episode John Snow's Fluffer. But uh, <laughs> if you want to wa- go back and watch that episode, it's a great episode. But uh, he, uh, like, yeah, he was like the stand-in and the guy that, like, you know, whenever they're checking the lighting to make sure it was all good and all, and they're like Kit Harrington. 
you don't want to stand there for fucking two hours, so they would have Dan Leith come in and do that. Right. And I was like, man, fucking you'd be bigger for that shit than you. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, fair. Yeah, but um, uh, we got some questions in here, man. Sure. If you're, right. I've, got, I've got a single one here. Just gonna get out of the way. Oh, first did you get a single one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, from, Six and a half inches on a good day. From the <laughs> <laughs> on a good day. Well, that's that. Mc, Declan McBride. <laughs> that question answered. No, uh, from the great and powerful Declan McBride. Shout out. Okay. Um, does look be given half to work on looking good, or is it na- <laughs> natural or dumb luck? This is me. I have a feeling a lot of them there are compliments more. Oh than yeah, I'm getting like a little hencher, but I'm also getting fatter at the same time. So but that's it's weird. Bulking I'm building up that Mickey Bartlett body where it's like all the Celtic mus- body. Mus- yeah, 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 fucking yeah. Built like it's the like, genie from Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my favorite like yeah. podcast bits. Are I haven't seen that. That's I, really I, I, I'm just all like it's. A, oh, really I'm the same. Classic. I'm the same. Where I'm like all top heavy. I have the legs of like an Olympic swimmer, but like the top half yeah. of like one of them guys that throw like fucking kegs over uh, like a, a bar in Scotland. You know, my body's. My body's like if if they made it in caps lock and then someone held down shift just as they got here. <laughs> <laughs> Commas. Like a, like a goomba. But like windings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wing Mon- yeah. By the way, there's a conspiracy. Oh, I know. I, know. I, don't don't even, like like, yeah, I only found that out recently. Um, but, uh, but, uh, does it have to have to work? Yeah, there's me working really hard on it. Good. I, I got into the gym in the last year mm. and I go about three or four times a week. But I'm all, it's more about I'm terrible at diet and, and I'm not always great at sleep. Because yeah. uh, once a week I fucking shift my Do circadian that. rhythm up the wazoo mm. with a night shift you know no, get the wazoo get yeah. the, I, love, I love the circadian rhythm I love that whole oh, thing it's got the blue light glasses and everything yeah, these are blue light actually are they I, don't know, I don't know if I'm meant to use them all my ones are blue light I don't know where the fuck they are they're floating about <laughs> here somewhere but. so when you were talking about actually when uh, Dak and asking about looking good or whatever Hi. when I before when I first met you, this is post long hair look, McGill. Oh, uh, yeah, he's quite you, Christ-like. Were you, were you the, the, the Messiah for a long time? <laughs> uh, no, that was just during the pandemic. I just, uh, first of all, I forgot to get it cut for a while, and then I noticed it getting longer. I was like, I'll just see how long I can get it. Sure, no one's looking. Yeah. And and when then, I, when uh, I first met you, the, the very hair long, was at the show. That was on my though. beard, actually, I suppose. I always had uh, a yeah, quite like a big beard. beard. When yeah. I first met you, it was like down to here, man. Nah, it was like at your navel, yeah. It's like, over. You know, you don't want to die without experimenting with all the stuff in your body. Exactly, yeah. But it's kind of. I'm stuck with my look forever, like no because at, at 20 years you old. I don't know. I know what it is. I feel like I look fat with a beard when it goes out. I think, see if you grew yeah. the beard out and had it like squared off. You know, like, that, like, I, uh, yeah, the, the, the Turkish, you know, the, uh, yeah, the actor, boss man but, beard. That, like, that's, yeah. that's a barber <laughs> thing. I, I couldn't do that myself. I would need to go. Because know what it is? I don't have fucking the patience to look after my beard. Yeah, I know what you mean. So We're, I like it just to look clean cut so I'll shave it down to like a fucking five on a razor and that's mm. it you know do you just... mind me asking and, and don't mean this in a rude way but when, right, you, ask when, you, you, want when you grow the hair where does it get on your head I mean like where's the, the line at the minute so I have a good hair line All right, like okay. I have a good it's the back I just assumed because I know you shave it that I thought that there was maybe a bad no that was, that was the thing because this happened I have no problem with talking about this don't worry but uh, I uh, I was in work over the pandemic in like 2020 2019 or whatever uh, and I remember I used to get my fringe like I used to get a fade and like a wee short fringe here yeah just Marco. straight across yeah right. literally but like not like high up you yeah. know like it was like just right and short and uh, shout out to Jap, my barber. He was a good lad, so he was. Um, so Jap, Jap, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but believe it or not, let's find out. He's like fucking half black, half okay. fucking like, <laughs> like it's white, like dreadlocks and shit, and like fucking braids so and all. So what you're trying to say is close enough. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Job. Um, but, yeah, but he was because his name was like his name is. You know what it was? It was his initials were J A P. Mm. But I can't remember oh, what okay. his middle and last name were. I just right. remember his first name was Jordan. Aye. But he was a good lad. I fucking miss him. He was a good lad. Adam met him one time and he did was mad. Or? What? You did no, no, I just uh, uh, don't go to the barber anymore. Oh, yeah, 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 right enough, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but uh, I started noticing it thinning out, a bit, like a tiny, tiny bit. Mm. Like it wasn't as thick as... It, I used to have the fucking thickest hair in Northern Ireland. Like my, I remember I had a mullet and I couldn't even get a comb through it. It was like fucking knobby oh, hair. It was like wow. crazy. And then in like 2020... What? Sorry, you're meant to wash it. You're meant to wash it. <laughs> There's a diaper on me, and uh, I uh, like I like I remember seeing it starting to th- like I was like here my th- hair's thinning out a bit, mm. and it was only like everything was thinning out, but like it wasn't the end of the world, you know. Like I, I cut it technically still had her, but then I noticed at the back one day it was like like a girl in work turned around to me and goes you're thinning at the back a wee bit. Mm. The next day I shaved my fucking head. I was that's like I don't fuck. want I don't want to yeah. be the guy that's ever thinning. Yeah. I want I like I'm either I believe in that. I get that. I was like yeah, I'm either take the jump. Yeah. I was like I, I was like fuck that and I was only like 20 so it's not like a fucking you know like I'm 35 doing it. Mm. Like I was 20 years old and I went fuck it hers gone. 
and uh, shaved my head and uh, like I had a beard and a chest hair and all. I was I was never like fucking. I, I never looked like a child, you know. If I shaved my head and had no beard, I'd look like some sort of fucking sex offender. But like. I, I shaved the head and I had a thick beard at like fucking 17 so it was like I'm alright yeah. but uh, like whenever I was like 20 I was like oh I look decent here I have a good head shape and all for it and uh, my hairline was always good the hairline's I can see it starting to go Aye. but I'm like I already shaved my head Doesn't so who, who gives a single yeah. fuck <laughs> yeah. and yeah. Uh, I've always everyone always asks me do you wear your hat because you shave your head and it's all it's because I've only like everyone I meet now is post head shaving right whereas like if you'd have known me from I was like fucking four years You're old I've I, I've wore hats from I was no age and I think like therapy I was, session I think it's because whenever I was like two or three no maybe older not like four or five mm. uh, someone dropped like a cinder block on my head oh fuck and split my whole head open and I have a bit of a scar on it oh shit right but I've like like it's more like a, a dent on my right. head and yeah. uh, I think I'm like uh, maybe fucking subconsciously insecure about that yeah perhaps or maybe it's even just about like a, like a protection like protection yeah. Things. Yeah. yeah like yeah. Maybe it's a, so I think it's from something like that just but walk by wearing a hard hat and pal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking Patty McDonald's new show <laughs> <laughs> me doing support in a hard hat <laughs> um, but uh, I uh, like I think I was like sort of weird about that like I was always just like nah I need to fucking mm. always mm. have something on my head and I remember even mm. whenever I had like real thick hair I was wearing a hat and people would take my hat off and I'd be like fucking no don't look and I was like full head of her yeah, like, yeah. like a mullet going yeah, down yeah, the yeah, back I was well, like don't look even. at me you know Aye. but uh, yeah that, that was like weird about it mm. what was the oh wait, what was the point question uh, working at looking good we got to and then we're oh, yeah, we're about, back oh, yeah. so got we have a couple of questions here we'll just be through them neither of them like getting confused with each other I mean I know one of them doesn't the other one probably he hits everything so. here Daphne McBride I have lined up to go against Autumn Byrne in my next I know battle. because I messaged Jack McBride going here do you need any help writing anything because I quite enjoyed writing Roost the last time and yeah. he, was, he showed me what he's got and I was like you don't need any help oh is it uh, really he's got some, yes he's I got hope some, Autumn gets he's fucking he's got roasted. some thunder to bring like I he, oh. I actually hated writing doing that Roast battle like oh, that was he had Jack McGee that was so great was like, yeah, yeah. I just don't like I don't didn't like the place I went to when I started writing those things. <laughs> it is weird because it's like it was. It, I found it. I did a one there last week, and it was. Um, it was like I did find it easier to write, and I was like, it's because I've turned off any compassion. <laughs> That's what <laughs> or, it is, and I didn't like, like morals. That yeah, when I write them because I was like, no, I'm weird. being a dick to my mate. There's, like, such you know a, I mean? there's such a freedom, like the jokes yeah. come really easily, but also then you look at them and you go, oh, I feel a bit sick. But no, it was mad. The, the whole thing when we were recording. Uh, the the like diss track like we pre-recorded it here like literally I was sitting here you were there really the good. mic was there it was really good and thank uh, you, thank you. like I remember because Jack listened to it on the way home <laughs> Wait, oh he was messaging me flat out being like this is actually great yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. he was like it's it. a good song <laughs> like, yeah, yeah it is a good song I, I had good. to keep like pausing it like we would be recording and we'll record like two or three lines and I would like pause it and go we well, do love Jack though like he's a good lad like, <laughs> <laughs> like honestly we'd be quite close with yeah, Jack like, with tears, so the yeah. thing was right I, I, Jack. I had Jack for ages in the rose bottle and for, we were always poking each other being like oh it's really you can tell me and we were I was like listen there's any lines you don't want me to cross which is good practice for a roast I think yes. check people's red oh, and I have yes. for the roast bottles for this one I've told everyone you can do whatever the fuck you want if you just want to script it. Yeah. Like if you just want to not if you if he's come say it, it's all off the top of the head. But um, like I've told people like if you if you just want to come down and you just want to like have a, have, a, have like you just know what like if you just want to send your each set to each other beforehand so you just know what you're going to say. I have no problem as long as the crowd has a good night. Yeah, I yeah. don't give a fuck about well, anything well, else. Well, that's because I messaged him and I messaged even Katrina as well to be like because I had a couple of the jokes in there that I was like. If, if he is okay with it I don't want to spoil it either yeah. so Soupy was like how big is his dick there's, <laughs> some, there's, there's some stuff as well where you where you go like I know this isn't one of the red lines that you mentioned but if you get a vibe you, you, you that they might not like it you should probably run it by yeah. them because there's some stuff you forget exactly. like, like oh fuck Ian this is amazing he was really good at, at as really he dropped it if you can look on the board behind oh, you there yeah uh, no. that's the lineup for the last one so it was and yes. I had like fucking uh Pete. Ian Thompson versus like Peter E. Davidson yeah, and I was like oh sorry Peter E. Man you didn't have that one there <laughs> <laughs> no Ian's a beast yeah. but um, I, I know here I'm, I'm meant to talk I'll talk to you about it after but I'm, I'm going to do another Pav one in December I don't want to step on toes I just want to make sure oh, you're you're no, no, don't worry about that you're but, 100% um, that, honestly I, I do them every week if you I want, want. want to know who you've got for the October one so I don't have the same people the October well. one yeah, uh, yeah. I doubt it um, 
because I have like people who don't usually get involved. That's interesting. Like yeah. so, I have like uh, Sean versus Daklin, Sean Haggerty versus or no, sorry, Sean Haggerty, Sean Haggerty versus Daklin McGill. No, away. sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fuck. Sean, Sean Haggerty World's versus second best Fuhrer here. The, the <laughs> Sean Hag- <laughs> Delightful callback. <laughs> so, so I'll, 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 Adam Byrne versus Daklin McBride. Sean Haggerty versus Talal Jamar. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I have oh, here. John Davlin versus Daniel Houston. Yes, who, he's told me about that. That's a good trip too. I've only, I've only met Daniel once, so I'm hoping he brings the fire with it. I think he's got um, it. I, I, John's going to be very good at it. I've never seen him do stand-up or anything, so oh, I'm relying on you, Daniel. Um, and I'm looking for one last bottle, and I I'm really struggling to find the last one because I had Rob Boyle and Eamon McElwee. Oh, but Eamon had to Eamon had to fucking drop out, and I was like, oh fuck, that would have been fucking a belter. Just someone else then, uh, a dairy one. That's he, right. I was thinking because Peter E. Davidson didn't do the last one. He was mad to do it, and he dropped out. Ro so Peter's got a lot on his plate though, so he yeah. cancel again. Yeah, yeah that's what that's what stresses me out about it. Yeah, yeah, we would have figured something out anyway. Fenton, Fenton Rowe would do that. Fenton's a fucking shout, you know, actually. I might say to him about that because I still have the message on my phone about it. So I know that Sam and Connell want to go for each other, so I'm going to get them. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they, they messaged me about that and I was thinking if push comes to shove, I'll get them too on it because because Connell did the last one Yeah. and I don't want to get a repeating artist. Do you know, yeah, like I the, if I was to get someone who was repeating, I was getting Heather Anderson. Heather because was amazing last Heather, well, I was Destroyed. scared of Heather at that. Yeah, I was like, some, she had some great stuff at I the... I see the smile on her face when she yeah. was delivering the things. I was the like, you're she was you ready see, for that like, you can see and she, this time we're doing it differently we're doing uh, like a Kill Tony <coughs> panel oh nice and it's like me your mom, I think I should mate. be a separate gig I think you should uh, you don't want to mix too many things in I think I'd say I wanted to do that but everyone uh, used, like, it was you and fucking like Adam and uh, Kieran and all were like convincing me otherwise because I wanted to do just like a Kill Tony type gig yeah and everyone said no because <laughs> it's already been done yeah. and then they were like just do it with a roast bottle mm. so if I have the panel on the roast bottle and go fair enough yeah so if it's me your man T Mike who runs it you met T Mike yeah, he was a, great, he's yeah. a lovely fella Good guy. Um, I'm actually meeting up with him tomorrow to shoot a promo for it uh, so T Mike um, and we'll get I think Adam's being on the panel because we're putting Adam on first mm. and we're getting Adam uh, yeah, his out of the way and we'll go right Adam you're staying on the fucking panel here is, yeah. and, uh, well that's going to be rough for him if he loses then yeah. he stay on stage all well, night so after that the thing, is, the, the, the thing is Adam's fucking he's a like he's even beef. even if Adam loses that roast battle the rest of the night he's ruining everyone else you know yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, oh, he, he'll, he'll lose the battle but win the war like, yeah, he uh, will, he'll, he'll ruin everyone the, else the only, the the only thing I actually originally thought that Kill Tony thing was a good idea but you run the risk of since the, the scene's so small here mm. just taking the piss out of your main jokes. or like you know or even, jokes. or even just like you know with, with I would feel personally uncomfortable if I was on a, on a on a panel of Kill Tony and someone goes up and does two minutes and I then take the piss out of them for yeah. something that I can't even do properly you know what sure, I mean that sure. can and then even people that like and then you're going to gig with them in the path and I expect you to be like, yeah, sorry about that, bro. You know, know what I mean? So, yeah, like, but, that, but that's yeah. the thing. Like, going into it, you better fucking you know, know like, that this... Yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah. Like, it's a roast battle. Like, I'm going to have a panel and I'm going to go, whoever wins, you're going to stay on and we're going to sort of interview you. Yeah. Or we might keep the both acts on and interview both of them. But if we, like, have a bit of back and forth and have a bit of slagging with them, like, again, it's me and Adam on the panel and T-Mike's smacked out as fuck, so he's bound <laughs> to have... So It's me and Adam and, like... As much as Johnny Bow left me with two assholes, you know, like <laughs> it was out of respect, Johnny. It was fucking... right that you did well. Though. There was one, one yeah. right there. Yeah, and I was too afraid to go in. Like if you'd have put me up against someone I didn't know at a fucking, at a, at a room, I've heart. had too many drinks. Um, but turn into Mickey Bartlett here. <laughs> I'm drunk. I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll do the questions here in a wee second because we need to get you out of here. Aye, aye. But uh, like I Risen. think with Adam on the panel. Uh, doing the whole roasting back and forth or interviewing them a wee bit I think we will be completely fine with it I Aye. think especially because this with me we we'll both do me and Adam both do podcasts so we're used to that, talking to people yeah. and blah 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 and be, like, we're both di- we have both did over fucking like two three hundred gigs each we're Aye. like we're used to being on stage we're used yeah, yeah. to it's my gig so I'm fucking going to be the most confident like, content mm. in the building but uh We'll be at these questions right and quick here and get you out of here Indeed. if that's okay. Yeah. Um, Connell Rhymes asked, "Who's your favorite comedian?" <laughs> um, it's always Connell pa- Rhymes. It's always, always Paddy McGacky. Paddy McGacky. Yeah. Yeah. I, like uh, I, I don't. I don't know if if I'm able to. If 
if you don't think this is appropriate for me to say, oh, yeah. then we'll bleep it out or whatever. But I was in the pub one night and he was gigging. He had he a was, rough one? Was, no, 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 he was great, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But actually, he was having a rough one, but he was so good, the, the crowd yeah. just wasn't having it, right? Yeah, yeah. And he said something like, uh, you've probably heard it a thousand times, but he goes, <coughs> uh, they tell you the one thing not to do when you're taking a penalty. And he goes, what is the one thing not to do? Somebody goes, change your mind. He goes, I <laughs> went to take a penalty. I went for a run instead. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. And here, great. I'm not joking. I just stand at the back and just. Oh, so you good. You know when some one person does yeah. the big buck buck laugh, yeah. everyone <laughs> turns around. I had to leave. I, swear, I had yeah. to leave. I, 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 so good. Paddy McGeoghy has oh. to be one of my favorite comics yeah. for writing. I don't see him as often as no, I should, but I, so I agree. He's, for whenever it comes, head whenever head. I see him, I go, he's fucking phenomenal. No online or, presence. I apologize yeah, if, if 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 I overstepped to saying that bit no. there. Here, the I'm going to say one of his bits right now. So. Yeah. Um, Left school uh, early, quarter to three. <laughs> <laughs> if it's Palomino now, we've got running water. Native American fella. Yeah. <laughs> the Native American. <laughs> so there was, it was one where he was like, have you ever seen what RTE show the, the map of Ireland on it? Yeah. And they cut Northern Ireland out of it. I seen it just started swimming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so but he, he goes, he, he was he was actually headlining that night and he went, uh, I'm going to talk to you about the Big Bang. Wow, the Big Bang. And no one, no, like crickets, you could hear ice clinking glasses, right? He goes, the big bang. No one answered. He goes, what, too soon? <laughs> 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 I was like, you, you simply can't get further away. You he know? Is like, so, oh, so uh, no online presence at all. Oh, that's the worst guy. about it. Go no, see if heart. you see anything with oh, Paddy McGecky on it. Go we'll fucking see, see it. He's, He's one of the, the funniest men on the planet. Uh, my second favourite comedian is always... Um, the person in front of me doing new material. I always think that's yeah. If you're, if you're making new material, you're trying to get better. That's, that's well. Good. I'm going to be your Worth. favorite act for the next six months. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, next question, man. Uh, Nathan Crothers, you know him well. Yes. Uh, he asked, "What would uh, your dream lineup for the pavilion be if you had to go? If you if he could get anyone, like say, uh, you know that whole if you could have dinner with him live and dead." Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Luke McGibbon runs the Pavilion Comedy Club Monday night. Yes. Uh, every Monday night in the Pavilion Bar in Ormo Road. It's fucking fantastic. It's where we've all Sometimes. learned. Every every one of your favourite comedians in Northern Ireland has learnt to do comedy. So I want you to go down and see that. Thank you very much. So Walter runs the best uh, three in the Black Box dream, once a month. Dream, <laughs> dream, oh, I, yeah, yeah. That's that's where I, I work through everyone I can't fit in the pav as well. <laughs> it's, uh, it's stage time for all. But um, yeah, uh, dream pav line up. Ah oh, fuck. Um, see, right. Uh, okay, and like just out of anyone, Steve Martin probably in there. I love oh, Steve Martin, yeah. Beast. Uh, Dylan Moran. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah, he's one of my. He's my favorite actually. Yeah, I, I saw that. that like, yeah. Saw that work. Steve Moran, Paddy McGaggy. Was <laughs> Steve Moran? Paddy McGaggy's MC. Dylan Moran, Steve Moran. Anyone like one? Who Who are my favorites now? I always I lo- really love Simon Amstel. Really thoughtful guy. Yeah. Um, he's got some fucking banger specials actually. Uh, do you know who's fucking got a great special? Adam Sandler. He has that new one. As oh, well. the, the, the real, I haven't seen it yet, but the, I've one, the, it. the one he did in 2018 is even better. It's fucking incredible. Was that the 100% fresh or something? 100% something? fresh. Yeah. Um, fuck. Uh, there were some other ones in there. Jesus Christ. Um, I really like Michelle Wolf. I think she's really funny. This is American comic with um, with uh, a, a shrill a shrill voice. <laughs> uh, we'll say. But um, and that's her words, not mine. Um. Yeah, fuck it, they'll do. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a great lineup. I'd love to say mine. Mine's real simple. I'd love to have like Tony Hinchcliffe hosting. Oh yeah, yeah. Tony Hinchcliffe MC, and uh, it would just be like fucking, just the the usual like headliner, like big ones. You know, mm. I'll probably have Mickey thrown in somewhere. I would probably have like Burt Kreischer opening, and I don't even find Burt Kreischer that funny. Mm. But I know he's like a he's Paddy McDonald like, type, where he gets the crowd sure. riled up. Energy. You know, yeah. yeah but uh, yeah, other than that. Um, next question, one. We'll just bait through these. Adam Byrne, <laughs> why have you got? Why have you got that honest and nice man in your heap of a background? Fuck you, Adam. Um, <laughs> Pet Morrow. Question for you. <laughs> you can go fuck yourself, Adam. That's what that is. <laughs> I'll delete your next podcast. I've got it. Pet Morrow. I've seen that name, but I think did he do Felt stand up once or twice as well? No, he's just a big fan of it. He's actually oh. he's a very lovely fellow. I ran into him pimp. one night in White's Tavern, oh. and uh, he bumped into him in the comedians' box as well. Yeah, 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 he was there. That's he. He was the one that offered the ticket. Remember, he was the one that was like, "Here, have it." Did I tell you about that? No. He was like, remember I bought a ticket and yeah. then the next day he taxed me going, here, I have a ticket here if you want it. And I was um, fucking fuming. Mate, mate. <laughs> but Shout uh, out Philip though. Shout yeah, out he was, he's a good lad. I ran into him in White's Tavern one night. He introduced himself to me and I was like, I thought it was yeah. getting noticed, but he was just he was just buzzing to tell me about how he loves all the comedy and I was like, all right, fair enough. <laughs> tell me about Kieran Franco and all. And I was, was like, he doing one of them... Uh, 
he's like there's an implicit except you yeah. <laughs> there's a, I know, well, I he, all the comedy now he, he spotted me you. he spotted me and he t- like because I I, I I seen a guy staring at me from the side of the bar mm. and I was like Someone's looking to scrap the night, and uh, like I just received <laughs> that. <laughs> it was just, it was just a, D- a DFS worker. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a king size double. What, uh, <laughs> I don't even know that makes sense. Like what do you want? Tax message comes through my phone. Are you in whites? <laughs> I was like, who's this dude? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he was like, look to your left, and I looked, and he was all. <laughs> and uh, next, blah blah blah. But uh, he's a good lad. He's but a good he, egg. I know. I think uh, I've seen him. Seen him on some stuff. Retweeting the odd thing. What was the question? He said, Luke, why does everyone say you're an evil fucker with the face of an altar boy? <laughs> <laughs> He's got the whole of one, too. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, yeah. The face of an altar boy. I think only only the horniest priests have said that. About me. But, um, <laughs> so the, all of them. <laughs> uh, that's what they say to convince themselves I'm underage so it feels dirty enough for them. Um, <laughs> oh, God. The pre- the, uh, the, yeah, no, the, the, why do people say I'm an evil bastard? Uh, probably I, th- because I think of, it's a rolling joke for uh, the Northern Irish comedy funny. scene. You know what was funny? You're the nicest person it's ever, the, but ones whenever you gotta, you're... What? you got to watch out for. You know what yeah. was funny? That was mentioned so flippantly. Just like... On podcast, on like, uh, well, there, there's been like four. Was. It was like Jack Potter, it was like Bomb Squad, and then it was like Tay with me. And I was like, I just, oh, did they say something about me in the old Bomb Squad now? I, th- I think they have mentioned you on it, yeah, because okay. I remember Gaddis and McCann talking I did about it. listen you. to Bomb Squad, but there's just there's so many of everything, and you, yeah. you don't always have enough it's time. It's, it, I think yeah. it's it's the best comedy podcast from that here, definitely. I, 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 what I do stuff. is all the podcasts I love, like all the big podcasts here, I would bank them and kind of go through them, like, yeah, be my girlfriend, go and listen to a lot of them. Everything Andrew Ryan's on, I like though. I like him as I think even more as a guest than I do as a host. Yeah. Like he's obviously a great host, but like I think just what they bring out of him is always really fun. Yeah, yeah. and the they egg him on and stuff yeah. for about, yeah. about the whole. Like, yeah, yeah. I met a uh, Connor Brennan Admin for the first time there today or Connor last night. Brennan, yeah. oh from the old radio, from Q radio. Yeah, he was, he was recording with Sean and Diona, and ah. a very lovely fella from ah, radio. Yeah. I know you're not listening, to this, Connor, but you're a good lad. So you'd <laughs> have to, you'd have to be lovely to get in the old radio. Yeah. Oh, you would be. Yeah. But uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, why do people say that? yeah? Because because it's not true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because it's probably is uh, yeah. Not to go. I think there's something grim about going. Yeah, I am very nice actually. Well, I I I'm think nice. what uh, d- maybe to try and answer that question on your behalf, right? From my perspective, when people say, "Oh, you have to watch out for him." And I was like, oh, I was mentioning flippantly, that's funny, because Luke's the nicest guy in the world. And then I seen you in the roast ball, and I was like, oh, no, he can psych him on. Yeah, that's you exactly from the inside out, I think, <laughs> because you practice restraint knowing sure. that oh, you could yeah. psychoanalyze people and decide not yeah. to so I think sure. I see whenever it's, like, yeah it's holstered it's not it's not suppressed I'd yeah, seen it a few holstered, times yes. I, yeah. I'd seen it a few times where whenever I first met Luke as I said Luke got me into comedy and stuff and uh, whenever like the first like year and a half of me doing comedy I just thought of Luke as the sweet sweetheart and then it was one night I'd seen Luke like hosting somewhere or I think it might have been the time you did Lavery's for the first time in a while oh, I went quite hard on some people in Lavery's and once I, or twice I remember seeing you and I remember going he's a fucking mental bastard <laughs> I was like <laughs> he's mental and then like the roast bottle was like the cherry on the cake for going yeah. oh you don't fuck with Luke like I think yeah. verbally he will ruin your life I you think know? that was, that was pre- I really what I enjoyed about that was going in everyone was like oh you're too nice to do this you're too it's like it's not about niceness it's about writing jokes isn't it yeah, yeah. yeah. With, 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 a de- with a day's notice by the way yeah, the people day's a day's I notice talk- this man fucking ruined he had them, written, he had them written for a fucking <laughs> long time <laughs> Alan Irwin had to happens? go on holiday because of this <laughs> <one night. laughs> um, no I, I what I did was it for that I just drove around I was driving around that day doing stuff and I just turned off the radio and turned off whatever I was listening to and just um, talked to myself about Alan in the car until I had said enough horrible things especially you know, you know, you know him a long time as well so it was probably I, it, was, I, it, was, I, um, it was wedged it, in it was history yeah. but the, the, do you know when that I'm looking forward to when that William Thompson roast now comes out uh, yeah, I'm buzzing to say it's that it's going to be on Shane's Patreon or whatever oh is it yeah I might have That'll to be good. sign up to Patreon or whatever I, yeah, yeah. Do, but the, um, it's, it's, it'll be it's it goes, was it great? Yeah, it was. It was a delight. I had a yeah. nice time. I'm glad. I'm glad you fucking enjoyed that one because yeah, I, I was. Whenever I seen you were on the lineup for it, I was buzzing for you. The wind, uh, the wind asked me on there normally. I think because I'm not. I don't run. With, I don't run with any crowd really. But uh, it's not. There's no. There's no drama. There's yeah. just. <laughs> there's just. Uh, I don't know. Life. Yeah. I don't know. I. What was, I don't know why people don't book me for stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. Like, say if you're not booking, look, your fucking head's wrecked, right? Um, but uh. Mango berry juice. Who's that? That's Ryan Campbell. Ryan Campbell. Ryan Campbell. Shout out. Good egg. Uh, to be in this town, you bastard. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's asked two questions, actually. Uh, will you ever grow your sexy ass hair back? Uh, <laughs> and what is the most extremely inappropriate joke you've ever told? Told. Ooh. 
Uh, I used to have some pretty misogynist stuff when I started because I was like 23. Class, uh, and same just, with me. A lot of mine at the start was about travelers, so some, which oh, Luke yeah, enough, yeah. convinced me not to do anymore. I had so. some. Um, I had some. I had some stuff about a breakup that I'd been through and I started and it was, it was yeah, I, I wouldn't even go into it it's too embarrassing <laughs> to say but it was just like yeah it was shitty stuff hindsight 2020 you realised that yeah. was distasteful hindsight 2011 like it was <laughs> that, that was how long ago it was never forget yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was my 9-11 was that a joke but uh, yeah they've hit the second ex-girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> I used to have some stuff about Freud and wanting to fuck my mum and that used to be a banker interesting but um uh, but you know it was like a 2011 banker which is like the the general standard of things was different back then yeah. like you know it, the clips are all gone of it now but there was like a reality show in 2009 called Find Me The Funny where it was like a, a, a comedy competition <laughs> and some of the biggest <laughs> names in current a lot of people still use it in their posters so that's <laughs> wild that's wild I didn't even know that because yeah, like, I, I wasn't even about for the Find Me The Funny era 2009 yeah and uh, children people, like I'm seeing like people being like on their like solo show posters, uh, find me the funny, blah blah blah, and I'm that's like, wild. bro, that's fucking. Oh, that might be show me the funny, which is a southern. Show thing, me the funny stuff. I know, because... show me the fun, but find me the funny. Really? I, I, I'm wow. very aware. Of find me the funny. Yeah. Like there's stuff like Mickey, there was Sean Haggerty, there was Aaron Butler, and all they were sort of the the the, the ones that won it and all that stuff. But um, um, and um, among others, obviously, who aren't all about now. But like um. If you watch the clips then of of the and they're gone now, but I remember clips of like amazing comics like Mickey and Sean and Butler and all doing sets that even back then were killing. Yeah. But you you can imagine them telling those jokes now, they'd be shite. Yeah, <laughs> they'd be yeah. Shite. it was like Mickey had like a five minute bit about a waistcoat he was wearing and and how continental it looked and how he thought it was continental and he thought he looked like Justin Timberlake, but he he just looked like a, a gimp in his words basically. And yeah. but like. And it was killing back then. It's just, it was just, it was it, it probably his banker, I imagine. But yeah. like, That's if he told it now, it's it just I, pales into <laughs> comparison to something yeah. he, something he would think on the toilet now. You yeah. Know? yeah, and it's insane how even a progr- even comedy progresses. Like when I first like see when you were talking about like the, the dream pav line up and all, I yeah. have no I barely have any idea who you're talking about, and that's to my own detriment because I'm the type of person I love comedy. Don't watch loads of it not mm. familiar with too many people on the scene other than like here yeah and it would definitely benefit me greatly if i was watching and studying and all that other stuff Do you but watch kill tony i i I, wa- I don't watch the whole thing but i've seen I, I, i'm familiar I with the lore like you know i've been i've been getting really into kill tony and see since i've actually started writing again yeah a lot of my stuff i've noticed i'm getting a lot of inspiration from a lot of even the shit ones yeah they get you thinking because they have like 30 acts in a night yeah in a minute each yeah yeah so there's and i think i think you should like because you were telling me before that you were struggling to write and stuff yeah i think if you watch a bit of kill tony you'll get a bit of inspiration out. and yeah. the like regulars who come on who are fucking fantastic yeah no it's more just see what the I write stuff down on my phone all the time, but it's kind of just like sometimes before I go up on stage, I'm like, I'll try that bit, and then I'll just I say the opener, and the next thing you know, I'm in the I'm in the thing, and next, and it's not happening, and then I'm like, no, because when I first started, I was doing a new bit every time, or a change, or tweaking, or whatever, you know. Yeah. But um, what I was saying there about um, oh, what the fuck was I saying about other comedians? Like, uh, <clears throat> sorry, that's my no, no, it's all good. Bro. I do this good. them all the time. Uh, Dream Path lineup. You didn't know who you were talking because we don't you don't watch. Enough. Yeah, I don't really uh, like. And that's not me being like, oh, look at me doing comedy. No, I don't no, care no. about it. But it's just like, and I know I should. I get you, though. But you, we're saying about, um, you're saying about how comedy, uh, yeah. Whenever I was watching comedy, even like the old school sets that I loved like years and years and years ago. Yeah. Um, and I watch them now, I'm like, that's not great. You know, it's not I, great. Cause like, but it should people, change. Like. When people whinge about like cancel culture, culture and stuff, they're like, they'll talk about like, oh, here, Morgan and Wise, you couldn't do that now. And I'm like, yeah, you couldn't do that now, not because of like woke culture, but because it's a style of humor that's like, it's out of date. And that's fine because jokes are not meant to last forever. Like, yeah. like yeah. I mean, like the first joke ever told was probably something about banging two rocks together because it's cavemen or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And like, if you told that now, both club, the wives. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't you, don't you hate it when your landlord makes you fucking kill your son because you don't have enough money to, <laughs> yeah, like, don't you hate it when your son dies as a chimney sweep you know, in the and it's like you know that wouldn't land now and not because people are too woke and easily offended I think that weirdly would t- land now that, I mean, that would work because that's weird <laughs> yeah. but, like, uh, but like, it's kind of like whenever there's like just all these moved on but I get what you mean yeah. whenever yeah. it's caveman there's just all these biomes like what's the deal with plain food that's a, that's a, that's a biome joke <laughs> what's the deal with paintings on the wall with your fingers <laughs> uh, but uh, listen too, um, too many of them triple celled organisms moving <laughs> I think it's getting a bit uh, much. 
But we need to get you out of here, man, because oh, it's uh, about a half an hour drive free, and you need to be in work soon. Aye. So uh, can we plug some shit? Oh, yes. fuck! Aye, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you do an extra replug the pod at the start of it. So Sweet. that's yeah. So yeah, because uh, okay. people don't listen this far. In, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, yeah, that's a good shout. Um, okay, well, I'll do that now then, shall I? Yeah, and there's no. Well, just, just plug whatever you want. Plug whatever you want. Oh right, after. yeah, you know, good shout. Um, um. Uh, point at the screen makes it feel like a wrestling promo, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not that guy. I'm not Brilliant that guy. brother. Come and see me. Um, I um, I'm doing a solo show at the end of the year on 20th of December in the Black Box. Uh, please fucking come because uh, that's me in bed as well. Please, fucking, <laughs> <laughs> me. Uh, please fucking. I've rented this room. It's too big. <laughs> I've, I've booked a room that's a little too big for me, but I thought I'll be fucking ambitious and push it a little. And uh, and I, I would love to see you there. It's going to be a good show. So where um, is it again? It's in the black box on the twentieth of December. Black you can time. buy tickets off my uh, social media. If you go to my Instagram or my TikTok, there's you know there's a link tree with there's going to be tickets there. If you live in Derry, I'm going to be doing a short work in progress version of that show uh at the end of november that's not been announced yet but like keep an eye on that it means you don't have to go all the way from Derry to the black box on 20th of december um so yeah uh, that 20th of december 20 uh, uh 20th of december 20 two, two, two what do you mean yeah, 20th to the 20th oh 28th sorry 28th, okay. yeah it's going to be during the christmas nether zone i'm trying to take oh, advantage that's of that that's, that's good best. that's yeah, actually that's when you want to be, yeah, you wanna nobody, be there, shit. nobody wants to be in the house yeah. And you've just been paid probably after Christmas. <laughs> yeah, good and stuff. Yeah, uh, so yeah, Christmas gift. Christmas gift. Yeah, also, yeah, Christmas gift to And if you could give it to somebody you hate, even as well. <laughs> you know, it doesn't even have to be to someone you love. As long as you buy the ticket, that's yeah, all that matters. Just, just fucking please come. No, I've sold enough for it to happen now yeah. and like comfortably. I think you'll have no problem, Sam. I understand you're, you're, you're shitting yourself, but you'll yeah. have no problem. And so, there's different kinds of sell out there as well because there's. You know, you can have that cabaret style seating, or you can have it road seating, right. or whatever. So, yeah. uh, I, I think, I think, I, if I had a push, I can maybe <coughs> sell out a lower tier of it. But uh, we'll see. We'll good see. stuff. Good stuff. Well, yeah, folks, fucking go buy tickets. Go follow look on Instagram, TikTok, <coughs> Facebook, MySpace, all the good pl- places. Fucking Bebo, man. <laughs> fucking yeah. Get on yeah. that shit. What was your? M- yeah, no, we're not box. even getting into what was your box? Box? <laughs> This man needs to go. So, uh, <laughs> listen, folks. Uh, thank you very much for listening to the User Hectic Podcast. We're every Tuesday at seven a.m. That's when the podcast comes out yeah the Early pe- here. Right, but they're not up to 12 anyway yeah. so it's already out by the time <laughs> say that rap game like getting up at 7am to rap no, they're not showing up to the studio for fun <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you very much for listening I've been Justin Freeman this is Supi Campbell that's our amazing guest Mr Luke McGibbon my Mr Miyagi uh, and I want you to stop asking your dad to text me so uh, take it easy listen well, my dad's got needs <laughs>